Hello, Internet. Welcome back to the Fast Travel Lounge. You're listening to episode 105. I'm Patrick, and I'm joined by Seth. Say hi. Yeah, hello. And Steve. Say hi. I was trying to make a tennis shake, but I don't have one, so I'm just going to go there and pretend that was uh, me hitting the tennis ball. It, it sounded like you hiccuped and then slid backwards off your chair. Anyway. Uh, you know what, Seth? Cut me out. No. <laughs> Not even this part, the whole section. <laughs> We're off to a rolling start. I don't think I'm going to get any better. I peaked. Just cut me out. Absolutely not. You're not even getting the yeah. animal noise treatment this time. <laughs> it's just going to be raw dog in your voice. <laughs> don't say that. Please don't say that. <laughs> Patrick, play us out. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine that. Like, we already hinted that we might be on a two-week upload schedule. We're already going to put content up that that breaks that schedule. Imagine that they see this recording and then it's just, it's five minutes of us talking and then another hour and 55 minutes of silence. <laughs> and then a second, and then a second happy birthday from Steve. Don't tempt me, I'll do it. What a, what a world, what a time to be alive. Um, anyway, yeah, we, we decided that on the back of the Game of the Year one that we, we would not want to leave you guys too long without something to listen to. So might still be doing the two-week upload, we'll see how we go, but for now, enjoy the fact that we are putting out another absolute banger of an episode, starting us off. Uh, I know it's been a while, guys. It's been a while. Uh, I have some good news and some bad news. Do you want the, the, which one do you want first? Give me the neutral news. Yeah, give me the mid news. Oh, fuck. All right. All right. Let's, hold on. Hold on. Calculating. Calculating. I can, I can do this. I can do this. No, you can't. I didn't eat my new smartphone. There we go. All right, yeah, I'd say that's pretty. That's pretty mid. That's 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 the menus. That's the menus. I mean, yeah, I can kind of see that. Smartphones <laughs> do be looking a little delicious lately, so fighting <laughs> off those temptations. Oh, my my new smartphone's an absolute snack. Let me tell you. Is it an Apple? <laughs> Holy shit, that would have been so much better. Oh uh, no, it's a Samsung. No, I, I know it's been a while, but normally we do we do hybrid um fun fun tech adventures, and I say normally, I think it's been what sixty episodes. Anyway, pulling that one back, I I finally after five years retired my smartphone, and and got a new one. Ah, oh, right on. Why? Because it, it had been five years, <laughs> and uh, the the old girl was getting tired. Yeah, that that five years seems like a reasonable amount of time to replace the smartphone. I don't do it yearly, but yeah, but I think I do it like every four to five years myself. Yeah, that, that's about what I've been swapping mine at. Because I, it's it's weird because I, when I first left, when I first left uni and plays, I left uni multiple times. When I did leave uni, part of starting a new job and getting paid actual money, upgraded my phone then. And the phone that I upgraded was a phone that I had for five years. <laughs> so it's it's almost a perfect five year cycle each time for me. But yeah, no, it was it was time, and my carrier was like, "Hey, please, please upgrade. <laughs> here is here is like discounts on the new phones. Please, please buy one." <laughs> and I'm like, "You know what? Maybe, maybe I will." And and so I did. And of course, the bad news being, normally we we want to punch that one into, uh, and then I also got Krispy Kreme. But All sadly, right. nice. Did you get the bucket hat? They're doing a special promotion where where if you spend an extra twelve dollars, you get that bucket hat. Did you get the bucket hat? I, I, I didn't because, Steve, I, I regret to inform you, the reason why the mid news was that I didn't eat the smartphone was that the bad news is that I didn't eat Krispy Kreme. What the fuck? What's the fucking point? Yeah, I know. I know. I'm why sorry. We, why even go out at this point? <laughs> Seth, play us out. <laughs> Hold on, let me get a Monster Hunter music. Oh, there we go. Yeah, absolute, absolute banger. So off of that, I'll offer it, realizing that this is now a, a four minute preamble, but two, two preamble. things that I want to say. Two, yeah, exactly. Two, two things that I want to say. One, absolutely love my new phone. It plays Monster Hunter now, which, as we all know, was my top 2023 game. <laughs> second place, second place. Fucking just kill me now. Anyway, uh, it plays that so well. It's, it's like buttery smooth. And it's actually really funny because I, I have it maxed out just like because I can because it's a new phone. And every so often, my phone will warn me, hey, Monster Hunter now is using too much memory. It might be impacting other parts of your phone. <laughs> <laughs> which is just very funny to me but no it's 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 crazy because you know most of now came out last year and like it, it ran well enough on my old phone but it wasn't it wasn't stellar it's it's like a neantic game right where you put it in background you put it in the background you go for a walk and then 
you open it up again. My old phone, it'd be like, ah, oh, he's teleported five kilometers. Nothing happened between those two points. He doesn't get anything, which, which was kind of annoying. Whereas this one, it's almost the opposite problem where it, it works so well that it frequently tells me that I need to open the game to claim all the shit that I picked up from walking. So that's cool. The other one that I noticed, so a lot of the promotion material or people reviewing it have been playing uh, a racing game on the phone. And I went, oh, I haven't played a racing game on a phone in ages. And that one looks quite fun. It looks quite arcadey and, and that sort of thing. So I uh, figured out what it was. It was, it's, it's um, uh, Asphalt 9 Legends. So maybe it's Asphalt Legends 9. No, I think it's Asphalt 9 Legends. I remember playing Asphalt like two or three so many years ago now. It's, it's insane. Anyway, Asphalt 9 downloaded it, booted it. I'm like, ah, oh, this, this game's kind of cool. Looks really good on the phone. I mean, I guess it, it just games just look really good on phones nowadays. Who knew? They do. Yeah. Yeah. Played it and all the mechanics uh, are in there and, and, that, and that's cool. The thing, the thing that smacked me is that uh, it, it did the mobile game thing of like really hand holding you through the first part of it, which it itself wasn't a bad thing. It just didn't prepare me for once it stopped holding my hand how little of the game was racing. <laughs> and it's such a shame because like at the core, it's actually quite a fun game. And it's like, oh, uh, it's got, they, they call it like one touch driving. But like the car basically drives itself, kind of like the, the Mario Kart game that came out where you don't really have to worry too much about steering and accelerating it. You're just kind of mindlessly swiping and it's a good time. This is kind of similar and it actually works quite well. Like that, that's not the complaint. The problem is, Every, every race that I did, it's like, oh, you've completed this race. Now you've unlocked this system. Now you've unlocked this system. And it got to the point where I closed the app and I came back. I could not gun to my head tell you how to start the next race because the only thing on the screen was how many different ways would you like to give the developers money? And it's, it's such a shame. And then after all of that, the icing on the cake, I did the next race and then it's like, hey, here's an ad. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is where Asphalt 9 and I part ways. It's just... I know, we're just giving you another way to pay the developers without having to pay them. <laughs> I'd rather pay the, like, 30 or 40 bucks up front. Not even get everything. I don't mind they're still being like, hey, do you want to unlock this car or whatever? That's fine. But just the sheer, just, like, quantity of shit that it can charge you for is insane. It's like, oh, okay, you have a car. Sweet. Uh, your car has fuel. You can only do it in with five races. Otherwise, you have to wait for the, the, the fuel to recharge. And everyone knows fucking gas prices. You, you go into a race and it's like, oh, well, your car's underpowered. Do you want to upgrade it? You just have to pay us money to upgrade it. And okay, um, use some of the in-game currency because I'm not fucking paying money for this shit. Barely squeak it over the upgrade line. You, you finish the race and it's like, oh, thank you for finishing the race. You get 10,000 credits. Or do you want to watch this ad and double it? And there's no button that says no. It waits a second and then gives you a button that says miss out. <laughs> it's just fucking disgusting, honestly. Like the game itself is really fun. It's, I've really enjoyed it, but I can't, man. I can't. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> it's mobile gaming at its peak. That's the thing, is that I, I realize I've ended up just fucking reviewing Asphalt 9 in the intro. Oh, well. But Do you that, rate it? That's what I wanted What's to- What's it out of 10? It's, it's, fucking- Don't edge uh, us. <laughs> no, edge him. Make him wait. Maybe, maybe I will. Maybe I will. But that, that's, that's the thing that it, that it looped back to. Of we had that discussion of like, why isn't mobile gaming taking ser taken seriously? That absolute train wreck of when I first started the game, oh, this is fun. And then I could, I could just list every little predatory practice that was in there of like, it's got loot boxes. It's got in-game currency. It's got timeout mechanics. It's got the entire fucking checklist. And at the core is still a really fun game. But it's just wrapped up in this ball of shit. And then everyone that comes in to develop mobile game, uh, sorry, that comes in to defend mobile games going, oh, but the game's really fun. You just have to look past all the shit. No, <laughs> I, I want to stamp it out. It's such bullshit. It really is. Anyway, four out of ten. <laughs> Probably would be a four. Like the, the, first, the first hour was genuinely fun. And then after an hour, it's just like, hey, you got this game for free. How would you like to just start dropping sick amounts of money on this? No, I would not. Go fuck yourself. So you're saying you're playing a free game and they ask you to pay and you're like, what the fuck? I want to pay for this. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. Mm, interesting. I'm saying if you, give, if you give me a reason to pay and the reason to pay isn't 
so that I can keep playing the game. It's it's because I want to to pay to do something. Now now imagine you had a video game and you paid I don't know ten dollars. That that seems like a reasonable price for a mobile game, and then you have to deal with none of the bullshit of it asking you to pay them in different ways. As I say, I don't mind there still being microtransactions in the game. That's fine. It's the fact that there's fucking four different in-game currencies which you have to convert between, and some of them are like using real-world money. And it's like, oh, you want to compete in this thing? Well, you need to just buy this racing ticket, which is this. And there's like a battle pass. And honestly, there, there's a, uh, there are videos of like, here is every mon- like predatory monetary practice in mobile games. I think I could count all of them in Asphalt 9, and I played it for, I played it for about two hours, and I haven't touched it since, because it's just like, I, I know what the rest of the game is now. Fuck you. <laughs> I have no interest. Anyway, as I was trying to say, that, that, that was my quick, um, sad Krispy Kreme, but happy um, Samsung phone update bit, and I guess it wasn't that, that quick by the end of it, but I guess we'll just go straight around the lounge. Other than that, uh, Seth, has there been anything possibly of note, probably not, you live a boring life, that you've been up to this week? Wow, just a way to call me out like that. But, you know, you're, you're right. Probably weren't any, any games that came out, really. No, especially nothing that was mentioned last week on the, uh, the episode where we said we had some anticipated games and potentially having games that were pre-ordered so that came out within that week. No. Nah. Pre-ordering? No, Why can... would you pre-order a game? Just wait. Uh, you got it 75% off, didn't you? I got it as a, uh, as a Christmas present. Okay. Oh, now, now, hear me out. Because that Christmas present was free, how would you like to pay the developers several thousand dollars? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Over the course of its life, I might. <laughs> That's probably just for day one DLC, to be honest. Luckily, there is no day one DLC in this fighting game. I was going to say, that's just for early access. What fighting game is it? Uh, it is Tekken 8. Tekken 8 came out and I've played a good chunk of it. What about um, 9? What does Tekken 9 feel about it? You know what? I will get into that later. It got eaten by Tekken 7. <laughs> uh, Ladies and gentlemen, he does it again. Um, yeah, I, I have also picked up Tekken 8. I realized, you know what, guys? <laughs> Off the back of my second best 2023 game being a fucking mobile game, I will make <laughs> more of an effort to play games that come out in current year. <laughs> it's also very funny because at the end of the last episode we recorded, you said, you know, I am excited about Tekken 8, but am I more excited about it and potentially going to pick it up over these other games I'm excited for? Probably not. And then like two days later, you immediately <laughs> bought it. Uh, like g- genuinely just partial, part of that was, was you convincing me just in the little tidbits that you dropped. And part but of it was also me just- I don't even know what I just- said I could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> But part of part of it was also just like it has been so long since I've played a fighting game like that. I'm, I was just going to say a fighting game. Do we count Smash the fight? We probably count Smash the fighting game. Yeah, right? yeah, a fighting, fighting game. game. Yeah. yeah. As much as I like to joke about it, not it is. Yeah, I'm just thinking like like fighting versus like platform fighter sort of thing. Yeah, it's a different type of subgenre of fighting game, but you know that's putting it into subgenres. No need to differentiate it on this show. Point being, it has been ages since I played Smash. And Smash is a little bit played out, and to be honest, it's just because I'm kind of shit at it. <laughs> but it is, it's been ages since I've played a fighting game like Tekken, and off the back of me going, let's not make 2024 the year of Patrick playing more fucking mobile games, which, as of recording, technically Asphalt 9 is now my second best 2024 <laughs> game, and I want to hang myself. Oh, wow, spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So start, start um, the year off right. You're starting the year off right. <laughs> Um, anyway, so that's why I picked it up, but we, we will talk about that. Uh, Steve, um, did you also pick up Tekken 8, per chance? Uh, look, I'll be real honest with you fellas. No, I did not. <laughs> uh, I know, I know, I know, please, thank, thank, please. Thank you for being honest. Please, pick your jaw up off, off, off the floor. Everybody knows I'm a very big fighting, fa- fighting game fan, or, and a very big fighting fan as well, depending on who you are. Given how many 14-year-olds you fight at Pokemon tournaments, we just assumed that Ooh, the fighting game was- huge update, huge update as well. Thanks for the reminder. Nearly complete. Oh, man, you got him started. Oh, no, no. So but that like, was this it, one 14-year-old, right? <laughs> well, okay, so this, this is a two-parter. So I, I haven't been uh, doing too well at the Pokemon. I just can't find the group. For, for, for the sake of, for the sake of uh, our, our lovely listeners, um, the fact that I've already derailed us with me effectively reviewing a mobile game in the intro, we'll get to that story in a sec, Steve. Is there anything else that you've done this week? Rats, I wanted to talk. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing P- Power World. Well, because it came, like, it, I, 
I thought this game was going to be a meme game regardless, but it came to uh, our best thing in the world, Game Pass. I'm like, you know <laughs> <Mobile>. what? <laughs> yeah, or you can stream it to your phone, technically. But no, yeah, I've been playing that because on Game Pass. I have thoughts about that game, and I think that those thoughts will be expressed in uh, words that I can find. I'd hope so. <laughs> I was just going to start grunting. Yeah, that was that. Patrick, I'm going to force this conversation to go into a certain direction because I don't think we have a Steam charts for this week. No, we don't. I've but accidentally I filled now. that with... Fuck's sake. Is it Power World? I was going to say, I accidentally filled that with Asphalt 9. Um, no, I was going to say, uh, just quickly. <laughs> Is it so 9? Let's, let's, let's just... <laughs> it's Steam charts. Um, let, let, let's, let's just cap around the lounge. I also remembered, it's been a bumper week for old, for old Pat. Crazy as that sounds, this probably will never happen again for the rest of the year. I played a couple rounds of the No Return Last of Us Part 2 Remastered DLC. Oh, yeah. I have right thoughts on, on that. Episode, then. I, I, I would rather... I'm going to spoiler it. I didn't like it very much, and I'm a big roguelike guy. So that'll be a cliffhanger probably for the next episode, because I'd rather talk about a game I do like, which is Tekken. All right. Now that we've finished the round the lounge section... Oh, my God. It's the first, it's the first proper episode back, and it's just the... Uh, I'm so sorry. Anyway, uh, right, Seth, what, what did you want to hit us with? Yeah, Steam Charts. Uh, and then we can roll from Steam Charts into uh, Stephen's thoughts about Power World. No, no, Stephen's thoughts about 14-year-olds. And my, I, just, I, I don't want to touch on that topic. <laughs> that play poke no, one. That, I, uh, my thoughts. <laughs> I picked my words very carefully. <laughs> wow, well, look, the first episode of the year, I'm already getting cancelled. Man, thanks, fellas. Okay, so there's, <laughs> there's two categories for this uh, Steam Charts. Category one. So the form, former top five was... Oh, I thought that was a choice. PUBG, <laughs> Counter-Strike 2, Lost Ark, Dota 2, and Elden Ring. Lost Ark, really? The, in that order, uh, yeah. what, what did Power World dethrone and take position of? Number one, surely. Yeah, it's... Uh, I don't think... Uh, it might be like a, um, a trick question. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, none say, of them. <laughs> nah, definitely. I want to say it's number three, Lost World. So closest without going over is uh, is Steven. It's oh, number two. Shit, Pat. It it, ah. it um it beat out Counter Strike two. It's under uh, PUBG Battlegrounds. How is PUBG? I've I so all right. Let, let me let me let me let me just uh, show my working. All right, PUBG to me should have quite an overlap of people that want to play that sort of game as Pal World because to me, having played neither of them. They look kind of similar, of kind of third person y, survival y. PUBG is a battle royale, while um, Pal World is an actual survival game where you just craft and shit. I get that. I'm just amazed that PUBG is, to be honest, outside of Pal World, I'm still amazed PUBG is just on the top of the Steam charts. Oh, yeah, it hit its peak in 2018. Um, it hasn't been as high since then. That's what I mean. But the fact that it's still up there. Oh, oh wait, was that of all time? Yeah, yeah, all time. Oh, shit. Sorry, I thought that was recent, because all the other ones, because, like, Dota 2 is a big heavy hitter for, like, just being popular. Counter-Strike 2, popular for heavy hitter. All of that. I didn't realize we're doing well time. Fuck. Okay, I probably would have guessed two or three. Anyway. Yeah, okay, good on Power World. Balls in Nintendo's court, I guess. Can't wait for the next Pokemon game to just be Power World. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the second part of the, uh, of the Steam charts. Yeah. What is the player count difference? Now, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you the number for PUBG. And you have to guess how much of a difference uh, Power World has with it. So PUBG uh, peak player count of all time was 3.2 million. Oh, all right. I'm going to guess Power World 3. Wait, if we're playing Price is Right rules, st uh, Steve goes first. <laughs> oh, man, I hate this. Um, <laughs> I went first last time, buddy. <laughs> that's true. You're right. Wait, hang on. So do you want the total number or the amount that went over? Um, give me the, give me the total number for Power World. Give me the total number for Power World. That'll be easier. Oh, oh I think I saw this like this morning because I'm in a bunch of groups about it. Uh, 2.7 million, I think. 2.701. <laughs> you're, you're a bastard. Uh, is, is that your <laughs> final answer? Yes. Yes. You're both wrong. It was 2.1. You went over, Pat. I win. Eat shit. <laughs> you're both over. Win. <laughs> yeah, but I, I was less over. You can't suicide me in, in Steam Charts. So the winner of this week's Steam Charts in the grand score of one and zero is Stephen. I hate every word in that sentence. Eat shit, Pat. I've won. 
But yeah, as of I, as of currently, like current top players, Power World is number one. I I would have guessed closer to three mil, so I would have been way out regardless. But that's still pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll get to its sales figures later in the news section. But I figured since we didn't have a Steam charts for this week, I'd take that that bit of news out and turn it into this game. Yeah, you just fucking love taking everything I hold dear from you, don't you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Love pulling that rug from underneath you. <laughs> Speaking of giving you wallet, Pat. That was the bet. <laughs> Speaking of things that Stephen loves, tell us about the 14-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, but okay, yeah, yeah let's... <laughs> He does it again, ladies and gentlemen. What a segue. <laughs> Uh, so to go back to my Pokemon VGC story, so I've still been competing in the background. I haven't been doing too well, struggling with Reg F, um, the newest regulation. Is it time to call out. it a quits? Uh, nearly. I nearly did. Um, but like over the well, weekend. What are you, the press? Don't listen to him, Seth. Follow. F- fuck. Don't listen to Seth, Steve. So what happened Damn over it. the weekend, like I like literally on Friday, I went 0 5, uh, and then there were two events on Sunday, and I went. 05 and in one of those matches because there was like two juniors and two seniors i was paired up against a junior and i lost and then i was paired up against a senior and i lost and a junior is 14 and under and a senior is um 15 to 17 so i, I j- if those are seniors what what are you like are you just open masters is what it's called masters okay yeah so it's not exactly the highest point of my life but then I'm like, whatever, I'll just play the second event. And if it doesn't go well, I'll just kill myself. So then I played the second event and I did really well. I made it to top eight and then I made it to top four. Um, and then I lost in top four. But that, that was really good. It, it really gave me a, um, it reaffirmed my belief that I'm an average player at best. Uh, so I've got Melbourne regionals over the weekend and that should be fun. But yeah, if I win Melbourne regionals, I'll qualify for world uh, in Hawaii. But there's no way that I'm winning that. Um, no, I believe you, I, you I got this. Yeah, no, you, you well, it's not going to be streamed. I don't stream Australian events because they're too expensive, the bastards. Um, so I might just, if I make it or something, I'll just trap a GoPro to my head or something. <laughs> no, not even your chest, just like full on like cave diver GoPro on head. <laughs> well, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, Twitch stonks it's about to safety go up. of the 14 year old. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Police body cam footage. <laughs> They've got, uh, I've got my body cam, they've got their body cam. There's no, there's no ambiguity about what's going on. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's the VGC update. Like, we're all going to make it. Just keep believing in yourself. Even if you do look to a 14-year-old, just keep believing in yourself. Just keep playing. It is, it is kind of cool that you are, I'm going to say in the same ballpark, even though you don't think you could back yourself to win Melbourne Regionals, the fact that in some ways that's all you have to do to qualify for Worlds is kind of crazy. In, in theory, I think there's nine matches before top cut and there's three or four matches in top cut. I'm 13 matches away from qualifying. Oh, like just, wait a just second, that match of... doesn't make you work out. You said nine and three, that's 12 matches. Whatever, I said three to four, didn't I? I'm cl- regardless, there's, I've we'll got to play some tapes. Pokemon, I've got to win. I've just, I've just got to keep winning. It's, it's not hard. Just... The, 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 the point that I was trying to make is that given the scale of Pokemon competition, right? Like, think of how many... I assume hundreds of thousands. Uh, maybe that is a bit high. I don't know. Either way, a shit ton of people try and qualify for Worlds, I assume, because Pokemon's kind of, you know, this tiny indie game made by a developer you've probably never even heard of, which I think is going to get sued by Power World for stealing all their IP. But it's just, it's just cool that, like, on that scale, because I, I actually can't think of a game that I'd be anywhere close to that scale-wise oh, being close to... Okay, That's- what the fuck do world champions for Borderlands 2 look like? Seth, riddle me that one. First to drop a legendary wins. <laughs> Most time spent be- in game. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, actually, actually keep talking, Seth. I, I like where you're going with this. Well, it's, it's, you can qualify for Pokemon Worlds not just by winning an event. There are like championship points you can get. And for like the Oceania region, I think you need to get 300. Um, and like, so for example, because I came in the top four. Uh, over the weekend, I think I get 20 championship points. But if you win Worlds, you get automatic qualification. But if you come second, you get like 200 points. And if you're like, I think it's, if you're in the top 100, sorry, if you're in the top 64, you get 80 or something, like a fair, a fair chunk. So there are other paths of qualifications. And a lot of the people that I'm playing with are like a couple events away from qualifying for Worlds, which is actually really sick. Because like the Melbourne 
Pokemon scene is probably one of the hardest in the world. And people that I play with constantly say that because you've got, let's say 20 people that compete and probably 13 of them have made it to worlds. And uh, I think one of the guys, or a few of them actually have, no, one of them was the seniors champion two years in a row. One of them was the juniors champion. Um, and they just sort of gotten older and gotten into masters. There are people that have qualified for like day two in worlds or have been like top eight and stuff. So it's, it's, it's quite a competitive scene. So every time I go like Oh five, I have to keep telling myself that. Uh, but then at the same time, I've got to get better, which I am. I'm getting better, I believe. Hmm. And that's cool. But anyway, Power World. Yeah, yeah, Power World. All right. <clears throat> For those that aren't aware, because uh, you don't engage with any other gaming news except for us, which is, thank you for your patronage. Um, Power World is <laughs> a, it was always hyped as this game that was Pokemon with guns. And everyone was like, what the fuck does that mean? And the first trailer they did is just like, you're riding on a big, furry, my neighbor Totoro type of character. And they've got a guns and it's like, oh, look, it's Pokemon with guns type of thing. And I did kind of get that, for lack of a better word, that meme type of element. And everyone was sort of really excited for it, but they didn't really show it off really any gameplay. And even uh, at the Game Awards, Jeff Keighley was like, oh, here's an ad for Power World. It's Pokemon with guns. And like it, that selling point to me has always been like, man, this game's going to be like my expectations for this game was fucking zero. I didn't know what the game was going to be. I expected it would be a turn-based thing like Pokemon, or at the very least, kind of like a open-world type of game, um, but very similar to Pokemon. But what they've done here is they've made a like an open-world survival game, much like your Arcs or your use a very basic example like Minecraft as well. Because essentially, you wash up on this island and it's like, oh yeah, find five towers, all the best, and. It's important to know that this game is in early access and it can very fucking tell. I mean, I'll get to that a bit later because some of these parts are just uh, some parts. I'm like, huh? Yeah, this, is, this game's not done. Um, and because I came out, I came into this game with zero expectations. Um, I think I'm I, I'm pleasantly surprised with what it is. Not that it does anything like new or intuitive or anything like that, but it's just, just it's just fun to play. It's so essentially like you instead of pokey. It's, it, it's unfair to compare this to Pokemon because uh, like it's not trying to be a Pokemon game. Like the closest thing it's got to Pokemon is the capturing monsters element. But essentially when you're capturing a, or a pal, sorry, when you capture a pal in a pal sphere, which is essentially a Pokeball and it even sh- it shakes three times. <laughs> the legal reasons is not a Pokeball. Yeah. And it shakes three times. And it's completely unrelated. Yeah. No, the Pokemon um, influence is hard to deny. You can't deny. There's no, it, it, like if you play, it's very similar to a Legends Arceus than it is to like a, a mainline Pokemon game. Like it's in, you're catching the pals in real time. You get a bonus if they're asleep or if they're, if you're catching them from the back and, and just sort of like the real time element of catching the Pokemon. It does sort of feel like a bit Legends Arceus and that kind of thing. Uh, but then when you've got the pals, you've got like a party of five that you can sort of adventure with or you use them for combat type of thing, or you can put them to work in your base. And if they're in your base, they're like, Chopping down trees, they're mining uh, stone that you can use to just build better upgrades and better stuff and all that uh, kind of thing. Uh, it's there's like a hunger meters as well, so you got to make sure that like, especially if you're doing a lot of fighting with your pals and they get hurt, they need more food. So you need to worry that your character itself needs to worry about food. Part and parcel of a survival craft, a survival yeah, survival crafting game. I will say though, like that's. It doesn't, it kind of, while it does in the early stage sort of favor that survival, oh, you got to punch a bunch of rocks and punch a bunch of trees to get all this sort of starting thing. It does get to a point after a, like half an hour, really, of that, like, you're no longer doing anything. Like, you're no longer discovering new materials or anything. It's like, oh, okay, like, I've, uh, I've set up a mining shack in my base. The pals are going to just mine it. And then that's kind of it they do all the mining for you and then they do all the chopping of the wood down. And then like, you're just taking those base materials and turning them into like nails or ingots or power spheres to catch more power. Uh, and that kind of sort of, it, it's getting set up to that point that was kind of like, Oh yeah, cool. This is kind of fun to expand the base and unlock new technologies and just get settled. And once you're settled, it's like, okay, cool. I'm settled. I can explore the world now. I um, mean, and it kind of, 
kind of feels like you can't do both at the same time. It's like you've got to actually get your base set up. You've got to get everything going. And then it's like, okay, I'm going. I can explore. And then when you are exploring, it's like, all right, well, i got to go back to sort of replenish my supplies. And that's kind of the gameplay loop. And just when you sort of get sick of going out and exploring, it's time to go back sometimes. But then sometimes you'll be like, well, this one pal had like a 70% capture rate. I used like 10 spheres on it and it didn't capture. I'm like, well, fucking out of spheres. i got to go back. And that can kind of be like, well, I didn't do it much. But it's still, it's still very fun. The path thing is absolute dog shit. So even though you've set your pals to work, sometimes they're just like, hey, I- I've gotten lost. And uh, for example, like my base is on sort of like a cliff face. The amount of times that I, the, they just fall off the fucking edge of the cliff. Or like I'll fast travel and it's like, they'll just sort of, all my pals will fall out of the sky because obviously they're loading in at a different time as I am. They fall out of the sky and it's like, oh, one of them like fell too high and like hurt themselves. Or like, oh, it's fallen off the cliff, fuck off. Oh, oh um, I fell down and I don't know how to get back up and I'm lost and I hate you. Um, and the, but that kind of stuff, like, it's important to note that this game is in early access. I can't remember if I said. And it doesn't really have that polish. Like there are, you can fly on powers. And if you fly a bit too far, uh, too fast, it doesn't load in properly. So then when you get off your power, you just fall through the earth and it's like, oh, okay, well, I've got to respawn now. And that's pretty fucking rough. But yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm having a good time. So what type of uh, cool. pal tamer are you? Are you are you fair to your pals, or do you do you drive up that slave labor? Come on, come on, Seth. His, pal, his pals are getting the guillotine ready. Yeah, no. Yeah. So that so you've got this fucking pedestal thing, and you can change it to like you're working your pals normally. You work them hard, or you're working them like insanely hard. Um, I did put it on insanely hard, but then like there's like a sanity bar, and they need to like rest and recuperate it. But if you put it up to like insanely hard, they just go fucking ape shit. And just refuse to do work. So you're not really getting any benefit. But if you work them too hard, because they're moving so much, they lose the pathing. Um, <laughs> because they've got to go, they've got to go to the chest, to drop off materials, and they just, they just get lost. So I just have to work them normally, um, for better or for worse. But these are digital creatures. I do not care for their well-being. I cannot interact with them. They're not real. Actually, no, I'll say, like, while they're heavily influenced by Pokemon... Like, it's undeniable, and if there is a legal challenge, there's a legal challenge. There's no real grand, ground to stand on, in my opinion. But, like, the pals don't evolve, and I think that it's, like, a key point of difference. Like, there's, I think, 110 pals that well, I last saw, and you can kind of tell that there are pals that are, like, kind of related to each other, but, like, they don't evolve, and that's kind of like, okay, I've got this penguin. I'm like, all right, well, he's just going to be a penguin forever type of thing. And I think that's... I honestly think that's a, like a key point of difference. Like no one's really sort of talking about that. Like the designs themselves, there's no way that it, it's definitely been inspired by Pokemon. But like in terms of gameplay, it doesn't feel like a Pokemon game apart from the, the Legend of Arceus catching type of mechanic. Yeah, and that's that's a part of the entire conversation of Power World that confuses me because watching it, it's like everyone's saying, oh, I'm going to get Power World to teach Game Freak a lesson, make them realize what sort of game we want. And it's it, watching it, it's like what lessons are Game Freak supposed to learn from Power World, they're completely different games. The only thing that's uh, similar is that Power World does have those uh, Pokemon catching mechanics like Legends Arceus does. And, and people that are saying that it's psychotic. I'm like, oh, this is really going to tell Game Freak what we want. We don't want this type of game for a Pokemon game. Like, it, it, let's say Game Freak made a game like this. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Let them cook. We don't? Yeah, yeah. No, we don't. Like, What if I want... what? What, what, if, what if I want to execute with extreme vengeance anything that could hurt my little mudkip? I feel like I'm in well, the, the right. Well, the Swampert is right there to take advantage of that. The Mega Swampert specifically. Mega Swampert. <laughs> the, one, the one that's knocking at your door. <laughs> Let him in. Right now. You, you hear that knocking? I thought Mega Swampert doesn't <laughs> knock, he just kicks the door in. <laughs> no, it's polite <laughs> about it at first. <laughs> at first. It gives you the illusion of choice. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's... it's, it's <laughs> People are like, oh, this will teach Game Freak a lesson. I think it's a psychotic type of way of thinking because, number one, um, if Game Freak put out a game like this, people would still be whinging because this is an early access and it's nothing changes after this game after the first five hours. Like, it's essentially the type of what you're building is going up. Like, it's instead of wood, you're building stone. Instead of stone, you're building concrete. Instead of building one sphere at a time, you're building three spheres at a time. Like, it's, it's and this game is good for what it is. But it's still a survival crafting game, and it's. I haven't played one of these games in probably four or five years, 
Um, like I'm not like after I'm done with this game, like if, I'm probably never going to play a survival crafted game for another four or five years. But I don't really, I don't, I, I, I don't see. Like, there are a couple of lessons in terms of like just general art, not art style is probably not the right word, but in, in terms of like graphics and all that kind of stuff. But Power World's got that problem as well. Like remember in Legends of Arceus, we made fun of like if there was a flying type two meters away, the wings would just go up and down like it's the slideshow. Uh, Power World's got the exact same fucking thing. That's just like a rendering issue and a pop-in issue. Like it's, it just kind of it's it's interesting to hear people say, "Oh, Game Freak will really learn now." It's like, no, I don't want them. Like, I want them to take some elements from this game. I I don't want them to copy this game. I I, I just I just want them to focus on Pokemon games and I, maybe I don't even want an open world Pokemon game. Has anybody thought about that? I want I give me a linear path. Hate open world. I do not want to figure out where to go. I want you to tell me where to go. I am not smart. If I wanted to be creative and figure out my own thing, I take the initiative at work and then get in trouble for taking the wrong initiative. <laughs> this is why Legends of Arceus was on the right track about what way to design the world. It's not open world, it's just big. Yeah, and it's the, the gated levels. Um, that was kind of halfway. I didn't like that because it felt like it was trying to be an open world, um, but it really wasn't. Um, I, just, just, I want Gen 10 to be... Uh, Good. Just, <laughs> Most you know, importantly, run well. Yeah, around 30 frames a second. But anyway, enough about Pokemon. I really, I'm really enjoying Power World. Um, my expectations for it were zero, so I think that's why I'm enjoying it more. And I think, I think I put like 10 or so hours into it, and I'm at that stage where it's like, all right, well, it, like, there's nothing more to do here. I'm just sort of like grinding a bit to get the levels up, to get like late game stuff so I can beat all those towers. Um, but it doesn't really tell you where to go, so I'm a bit lost, so I think about the wrong tower. But I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I, I, it's, it. It's it's a weird recommendation. Like I get the feeling that like it's we'll talk about the sales numbers in the news, and I'll make a bit more of comment comment then. But I think this is one of those games where it's like, if you're not into survival crafting games, don't get it because it is very survival crafting. But at the same time, a lot of people don't really play survival crafting games, so it's a good kind of entry point for that. But at the same time, it is an early access. There's a shit ton of bugs and glitches and all that. At maybe the same amount that are in Scarlet and Violet. Um, which is fucking disappointing as shit when you really think about it. But yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. I'm I'm not going to rate it because it's in early access, and I think it's unfair to rate games on early access because it could change, um, or just things could run better and all that kind of thing. But for what they've got there, it's it's really solid. It's really fun. Um, it's fantastic. It's on fucking Game Pass because I wasn't going to pay for it, and I'm glad I didn't pay for it. Another time, uh, another way that we're saying it's a perfect Game Pass game. But but like I'm I'm really enjoying it. It's a Steven out of ten for me. I know that we've spoken about a bajillion Game Pass games because that's all you fucking talk about. But I'm not buying games. Is it? Oh, I fucking jump. <laughs> not that side of it, but how common is it to have a game that's in early access on Game Pass? Um, not that common. Um, and I guess uh, because Xbox has got to be different. Um, they call it game preview. Um, because that's <laughs> just oh, getting, of course yeah, they do. Just getting a game preview, like they did their biggest. G- Game preview game. I'm using that in quotation marks. But- Starfield. Thank <laughs> 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 you, man. Red while he's Ball. down. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. Um, no, you, you might be right there. Um, was that grounded game that came out like a year ago or so? Like it fully came out a year ago, but it was in game preview for like three years. And That's I was right. Content. Um, and that was. I think that was like a survival crafting game as well, roughly. The the reason the reason I say it is because it's it's always interesting. It's always interesting to me when a game like this is kind of like, uh, what is it like? Minecraft is in there. There's a few others where they're like, this game is massive right now, right? It's, it's all anyone's talking about, anyone's playing, and it's in early access. And so I get that there are bugs, there are glitches, all that sort of stuff, and eventually there will be a version one. But it's kind of weird that it's not just in version one because of how popular it is. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what the difference between this is and what version one of this is versus a AAA title where this is the the version one and it's like, okay, you know, no game is perfect. Games always have bugs and glitches and things and they just patch those out as as they move onwards as well. Like, I'd be curious to know when when this game does go to 1.0, what the player base looks like then, whenever that may be, uh, they probably announced when they're going to do it. I, I haven't played Power World, so I haven't. I have no idea what's in the roadmap. But it, is, am I am I the only one that, that thinks that that's sort of odd? 
because we have millions of people playing this early access game. Why, like, the, the, in my head, this game is as popular as it will ever be right now. Yeah, that is correct. 100%. Yeah, you're, you're right. It's a flag. I was going to say it's, this it's, it's later. It's kind of, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and so it's kind of interesting when, when a developer is like, okay, the game is at maximum popularity now, but, but just trust us. Like, you know, version one's coming. It's, we're going we're gonna to do all this other stuff, all, the, all these other bits and pieces. And it's like, I'm, I'm not asking the question, why would you want to? But it's quite different to a game where it's like the, the hype is the game's release. And now we're in this weird future where the hype is the game's pre-release that I don't think anyone, I don't think there's anyone who wants to get into Power World who's waiting for version one. Maybe that's a better way of saying yeah, it. Yeah. Anyone who wants to get into Power World can get into it right now. And so that's weird to me for me to think of in terms of both availability on Game Pass as well as just the sheer number of people There's playing There's one it. game that beats this allegation, but it's because of a very specific freak accident, the way they handled it. No is. Man's Sky. <laughs> uh, I was going to say Hades. Hades was early access, and it was fairly popular, but it was also early access exclusively on the Epic Game Store. Uh, so when it finally came out on Steam with the 1.0 release, that's when the game took off massively uh, successful. But that's also because, hey, it went to Steam. Pal World, Pal yeah. World from day one is uh, already, already there. <laughs> so I don't think yeah. it's going to get that sort of bump again. No, I, I don't think it will either. Uh, and of course, if it was made by Naughty Dog, we'd be getting Pal World remastered next year anyway. Yeah. Um, what were you going to say, Steve? No, I, I'm just, I just think it's interesting that this is definitely flavor of the month shovelware type of stuff. Like, it's really popular now, you're right. It probably... <laughs> It, it probably- <laughs> Millions of people playing this game. It's like top, whatever the stat that we just pulled out, top two on Steam all time number of player play- players concurrent. You played it and you're like, yeah, I enjoy bits of this. And at the end of it, you're like, let's be real, it's shovelware. <laughs> well, it, 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 it does nothing different. It has nothing that already hasn't been done before with like Ark or something. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. the only reason yeah. people are buying no, I, this. I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's just really funny putting it in black and white. Yeah, like, like that. It's, it is what it is. Like it probably will, when it does release in version 1.0 or. If it even does, because I can't remember this company, the company developer's name, but like they've don't think they've really ever released a game. Like one of their last games, uh, Craftopia, which I was, which is a Breath of the Wild clone, that never fucking. Re- yeah, I was gonna say. I'm sorry, you mean Breath of the Wild? Yeah, too? Like that, that never re- that never released out of um, early access as well. So even if they do get to version 1.0, uh, they probably might just bring a couple people back and be like, oh yeah, cool, this is fun. Like it's nothing different, nothing. And they might get a couple of other people to buy it to be like, oh, yeah, that's right. This exists. Um, I want to see the finished copy. But yeah, this is actually this is as good as the game's going to get. Holy shit. Just as I'm thinking on that, though, we have another game where this could be the case. Warner Brothers um, Platform Fighter. I've already forgotten the name of it. Oh, Multiverses. Multiverses. That was, oh, that was early access. It was. Yeah, and yeah. then they were taken off the market. <laughs> They treated the early access <laughs> like it was a waiting. full release as well. That, that's what I'm saying. And, and they had fucking, <laughs> fucking technical roadmap of character releases in early access. And now it's gone from the universe and we're waiting for version one. Which is funny because I'm pretty sure that the it, it, was, it, it came into early access, like closed beta sort of thing uh, for a month. And I feel like after that month, they were calling the... Uh, the open early access was 1.0. Maybe they were, but I'm, I, I, I don't remember the details on that, but I, I just, it's just as we're having this conversation, I'm suddenly realizing like we, we literally talked about this with, with multiverses of they, they pulled it down and said, okay, now trust us, version one's going to be crazy. I don't think it will. <laughs> oh, it, it, see, the thing is like multiverses was like, we only thought like, it was in early access and they did say it was in early access. But it didn't feel like it was in early access. Like, there were no glitches. They charged no people bugs. money for shit in that. <laughs> yeah, and, and you could. It, there was a fucking store, which is fucking That's insane. That's what I'm saying. But, like, with this, it's, it definitely feels like it's early access. Like, things go wrong all the time. Glitches mm. and bugs occur. Rendering issues occur. Sometimes the game's just like, you're like, no, nope, I've been open for a bit too long. I'm crashing. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes the game is just actually playing Pokemon Legends Arceus. <laughs> I'm playing on my Xbox. <laughs> like, oh shit! <laughs> yeah, all, all the skins have gone. Oh, have gone missing. <laughs> but, but yeah, like, and like sometimes the music just doesn't play, or it plays the same note multiple times. But like, and I, oh, good. I think it's just the quality of early access games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying that this game doesn't have any reason to be early access. You know, like they, they put it out as an early access, and the popularity blows up. That's cool. That's like, um, 
What was the flavor of the month last last week? Le- Limbus um, company. company. Sorry, last month. Limbus Company. What? No, Lethal Company. Lethal Company. What am I thinking of? Yeah. Limbus Company is a mobile game. <laughs> what the game. fuck are you thinking of? Is it? Uh. Oh. <laughs> or a company that makes a mobile game. And they they had some uh, controversy happen around them last year. Oh, yeah, of course they did. Um, the, but again, it's, it's another one of like, it, it was initially to be early access and it wasn't early access. And then everyone went, holy shit, this is amazing. And then played the shit out of it. And I imagine that ship has sailed in terms of when it's the most popular that will ever be as well. Like, it's, it's nothing against the developer or anything. It's just, it's just funny that we've, we've gone so backwards in the hype cycle that we don't even need the finished product for it to theoretically hit maximum anymore. <laughs> Among Us was in a similar boat as well. Like it came out like yeah. 2018 and the developers were like midway through making Among Us 2 and then the game yeah, popped exactly. up in like, what was it, 2021 because of COVID? And 2020, then- yeah. Yeah, 2020, 2021. Yeah. Bo- both years. They, they just straight up had to cancel Among Us 2 so they could continue supporting Among Us 1. Yeah. I don't know what they're learning, like in a business kind of sense. I, I don't. I think the learning is here: don't release a full game; just release early access. And <laughs> what do you mean? Ubisoft is looking at skull and bones and rubbing their hands. <laughs> I think EA tried this as well, and it didn't work out for them. No big surprise. EA tried something; it didn't work. They probably shut down their beloved studio. <laughs> yeah. What they did for the studio. By, when that's, the Inquisition comes see, out, let's that, see. That, that's the thing, Seth. I was going to joke, like, that's what they did with Anthem, but it was a version <laughs> one. <laughs> that Anthem, oh, well, let's not talk about it. That had potential, but... It... No, no, but, but, that, but that's the thing, though. That, that's, that's exactly my point, though, Steve, is that, that that's the opposite problem. That's where the version one came out, and everyone played it and went, this is good. And then what? Because it felt like an early access game. Not in quality, but just in terms of, like, the, the full experience was done. That was, that was it. Oh, I think Anthem had a bunch of problems as well on release, didn't it? I'm I'm sure it did. Um, there was another one I was thinking of as well. Uh, uh doesn't matter. Pokemon Scarlet Violet. Diamond Diamond doesn't at this point, but yeah, I don't know. It's just interesting. We were sort of getting off topic from Power World, so um, uh, yeah. O- overall, overall rating. How much interest is there moving forward? Are you going to be a, a a version one Chad? Oh, maybe. You know, I, I I've been thinking about it. I probably will, but only in a like. Let's say in a year's time it fully releases, and that's a big if. I'll jump back in see if any, if anything's changed. Um, like it wouldn't surprise me if like they're going forward, they just release like a bunch of like, oh, here's another pal to catch. That's kind of their content roadmap. Like it doesn't really change anything. But I'm still very interested. To I, like this game sort of feels like it is finished, apart from all the bugs and glitches. So I don't know what a version one looks like. But I but I am very interested, and I probably will go back. But after it's mm. released. So if it is on Game Pass, if it's on Game Pass, then... <laughs> once, once they start putting in the Battle Pass and the seasonal events. Hopefully. Got to bring me back somehow. Actually, they, they have shiny pals, eh? They're not shiny pals. They're... Uh... <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, for legal reasons, they are not shiny, but do they have different colored pals? I think they're called rare pals, and they're a little bit bigger. <laughs> they sparkle, not shine. They sparkle. And they play like this music when you're... Like, it's just crescendo when you're near when you're near one so it's like oh shit oh kind of like the legends arceus house goes a, da, da, da. this is like this music that's constantly playing um and it's like oh fuck there's one nearby and i kind of like where is it where is it and because it's a bit bigger and it's got better stats as well it's kind of like oh fuck yeah a rare pal um and i found actually a couple i found two of those fucking lambs and just on the just on the design of the pals as well some of them are right some of them are pretty shit <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to tell the pal you said that. Good, fucking tell them. <laughs> you know, and I, I'm sure everybody knows this, but just in case they don't, that for whatever reason, they, they invented this fucking pal that's like, it's literally entire premise for being, um, it's just like sleep with humans, like have sex with them. And they made it number 69. <laughs> that's pal number 69. Ladies and gentlemen. Holy based. No. We got them. <laughs> Holy cringe. <laughs> Um, and they called it Love Ender because you get like a pal deck, not a Pokédex, a pal deck. Yeah, Different. they released a trailer of that one. I think we might have talked about it when they did, and it's like a pink Salazzle. Yeah, they, they know what they're doing. They know what they're fucking doing. <laughs> we want the furry audience. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's me done. Um, Power World's all right. Out of ten. It's, I'm not. It's an early access game. I'm not giving it a score out of ten. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Got to wait for them to add the Coliseum that has pal versus pal battles. Um, yeah, it's not turn-based. There's no competitive fighting community. There's no 14-year-olds I can lose to. I don't care. Don't want to play it. 14-year-olds, eh? Ah. 
Move on. How's Tekken? You been punching fourteen year olds? No, I've been punching Patrick. <laughs> I had a, I had a, I had a segue, but you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Stephen threw it at me, and then I had to throw hands at you. And then I counter. No, I, I didn't counter. Well, we played enough friendlies. So I, I didn't counter. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, let's uh, let, let let let's talk about uh, Tekken Eight. I don't have a structure for how both of us will talk about this. Yeah, um, me either. Hmm, <laughs> we're we're okay. kind of all over the place on this one because we play different modes. Yeah, uh, I'll start because you've played the story and I think the story is probably more important than Arcade Quest. So what have I done in Tekken? Actually, no, Arcade Quest is kind of important to start off with as well because, well, you'll explain that anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like I was about to. Yeah, go ahead. I'm giving you the floor. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> fucking editor's getting jumpy. I have to go fucking execute one of his family members <laughs> to keep him in line. <laughs> no, I just uh, need to play another match. <laughs> just one more hit. <laughs> one more death fist. <laughs> uh, so I, I last played, I, I keep bringing this up because I feel like it's relevant for context. I last played Tekken 5? <laughs> I think you said the one on PS3, which would have been Tekken 6. No, no, no. Um, Dark, Dark Resurrection, the one on PSP. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's Tekken 5. Yeah, there we go. So I last played Tekken 5, and I played maybe one round on someone else's PlayStation for Tekken 6. Basically didn't play it. Uh, and that's, that's basically it for Tekken. So I know, I know the characters, and I know little bits of story, but not any huge amount. So I went into this game fairly blind, but just knowing that I wanted to play Tekken. Actually, no, you know what it was? Um, us trying to think through like why, why I was encouraged to play this one. All the reviews said that, that this Tekken was, was really, really good. And I'm like, well, the internet can't be wrong. They're never wrong about anything ever. So I will buy it. What an insane. I think it's got like a 90 <laughs> on Open Critic. Yeah, all, all that sort open of thing. Open Critic? The fuck is Open Critic? <laughs> it's the opposite of Metacritic. No, I'm going to trust the only thing that matters. Google users, 93% like this game. Metacritic is also a 90. IGN's also a 9 out of 10. Ah, yuck. It's much shit game then. Paid it. Paid it. Sorry, go on. The point oh, hold being- on, hold on, I think, oh. I think we should give oh, Steven some important stats here. So the PS5 version is a 90 on Metacritic. The PC version is a 93. And the Xbox version is an 87. <laughs> Xbox gamers have the true taste. I like that the Xbox gamers tried their hardest to make the score 88 for Tekken 8 and fucked it up. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, uh, so I went into this game mostly blind, picked it up, did... So it has a much easier ramp of getting into it than, than I want to say, than previous games than my last attempt at Tekken, which I'm also just older because the PSP is an old console now. <laughs> I think I might even still have the UMD somewhere. That's crazy. Anyway... There's a, there's a cool ramp up called Arcade Quest where you get to make a biblically accurate representation of yourself, which is why I basically look, look like the Hulk with turquoise hair, which was just funny to me. Hold on, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I put in the video version right here what your character looks like. <laughs> if you put a picture of me, I'm going to slap you. <laughs> no, you posted your character before in one uh, of our conversations. <laughs> no, I know, but it's, if you just put like my profile pic or something, in it, here's, here's his character, just like a <laughs> mugshot. <laughs> um, uh, so in Arcade Quest, it does a combination of giving you the barest bones kind of Pokemon-esque story of you have a rival, your rival just shits on you for no reason, your mission in life is to destroy them, uh, as well as introducing you very gradually and quite well done, actually, to a whole bunch of mechanics of, of how Tekken 8 works. Uh, and it, it does it quite well. It, it builds you up uh, quite nicely. And it's cool because there's nothing stopping you just using all the mechanics out of the box, but I did it in this, in this weird thing. of I did about, I think I did half the arcade quest. There about, I did some of the arcade quest. And then went and fought Seth a bunch. And while fighting Seth, some of the questions I had both for Seth and myself just in the internal monologue was stuff like, I'm getting punished by doing this. I don't know what counterplay options I have when this happens. And Arcade Quest was actually good enough that in some cases it was like, ah, what if you're in a situation that I was in? You have access to these sorts of counterplay options. And it's like, I'm glad that the, what is basically just a story-based tutorial system covers these sorts of things. It's not just, now you know the basics, good luck online, kid. 
Um, so that was really cool. I want to add another coolness factor to this, in you saying that's a tutorial. This is the first time Tekken's doing an abs- actual tutorial in their games. They usually just leave it to, okay, here's the game, good luck, kid, go out there and show the world what you've learned, and you just that's look at the I'm game saying. going, you haven't taught me anything. No, 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 like, not even to the point of, like, other fighting games usually have, like, here's a tutorial mode where we'll just, te- like, text boxes, here's what movement does, here's what your buttons do, and so on. Tekken has never done anything like that. It's just been, here's the game, press the buttons yourself to figure it out, and then go out and play it online. And then they'd come out and do, like, an actual little story that tutorializes you, and it turns out this is the best tutorial system in the fighting game genre on their first try. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I, I seem to remember if you went into the move list of characters in Tekken 5, it, it would do a, I'm doing air quotes, tutorial by saying, um, this is left punch, this is right punch, this is left kick, this is right kick. Uh, not in terms of this is how they work, but just in terms of the move list just gives you the buttons, like, yeah. like looking at the controls. And that's as far as the tutorial goes. So yeah, th- this one gives you a full kind of, as I say, ramp into, into playing Tekken. The story I don't think is meant to be hard. I, I didn't adjust the difficulty. I played pretty much everything on medium. But I mean, entertaining enough. It's like you go to different arcades. I, I did think it was quite cool that there was kind of like an arcade within an arcade thing. Like it, it made a big deal about kind of fantasizing the, the fighting game genre of let's just go to the, the arcade with a bunch of mates and just have some friendlies like that. That was sort of a cool angle and you go through and then make it to worlds and then kick your rival's ass and all that sort of, all that sort of stuff. That's cool. Yeah, the fighting game genre recently has been fantasizing uh, the arcade the culture of the, of the um yeah yeah the genre's roots yeah yeah because yeah. um uh, Street Fighter does that too with how they do their online lobby system oh, it's just it. one big arcade area mm. yeah so there, there's all that built in and so did the arcade quest thought it was pretty good I I keep popping back in every so often just because you can fight people for like treasure boxes which just give you more stuff to like there's like a big focus on customization which Typically, I leave out of games unless I can make myself either look like I can make someone physically ill, or I can do something that just makes myself look really cool. And um, I hit the physically ill angle with my choice of um, character, and I thought that was funny enough. There's a crazy amount of character customization, like the, the, the fighting game, like actual character customization. So many people are making Drake out of all the characters. <laughs> So again, back to when Seth and I did our first round of friendlies, I thought some of the characters that Seth was playing as were just different skins because there is like a button for you can, I can't remember what they call it, but you can just put on sort of alternate skins. But I didn't realize you could actually go further than that into actually customizing more of how your character looks almost to like WWE type thing of just building your own wrestler, which for some reason is where my mind went to with the character creator. Anyway, very cool. I have a shit ton of in-game currency from all the stuff I played and just not bought anything. But Arcade Quest, finished. Uh, what do I do next? I played through all of the character episodes, which is a series of five battles, uh, which follow like a real brief story with an intro and an outro cutscene. I feel like most fighting games do something similar to this. Yeah, a lot of them have like arcade modes set like this. Yeah. It's an improvement of what they had in Tekken 7 because Tekken 7 also had character episodes, but those were all just one fight with a little bit of um, preamble that that, that was, was voiceless. You had to read the text yourself to figure out what was the scenario they were getting into with the match. Uh-huh. The Game Freak approach. And then they'd have like a small um, cutscene at the end. This one is much more very uh, varied and everyone has them. And... They're, they're all more entertaining. Like, Tekken 7 was kind of flaccid, but this goes back to how, like, Tekken 5 and 6 and every other earlier game went with... There's some goofy ones, there's some serious ones, mm. and they're all really well done. And yeah, there, there's, a, there's a good mix of what looks like joke endings and possible hints to Tekken 9 character growth endings. Mm. Uh, so you can't do two of the characters in the character quest until you complete the story mode. So... Yeah. I haven't done Jun oh, or, or Reyna because yeah. they, I assume, have impacts on the like, Tekken 8 story. So did all those. It's a really good way of just giving it, getting a taste of the different combat styles of each of the characters. And I did really enjoy, I also quite enjoyed this from 
I guess my last fighting game being Smash, where Smash, I know every character plays differently, but if you can play one character, you can pretty quickly get up to speed with playing a similar character. Here, a in the it's directional like, buttons, B in the directional yeah, buttons. Yeah, that kind of thing. Here it's like, ah, uh, you are playing, I don't know, like Jin, just like one of the title characters who his martial art is karate. And so you press button and he, he does action and you're like, yeah, this is sort of martial arts. <laughs> and then uh, you'll swap to another character and it'll be like, ah, oh, you're now playing a ninja and you need all this complex directional input because otherwise you just sit there looking pants on head stupid, getting absolutely just beaten the shit out of all that sort of stuff. So it, it was really cool. Like, five matches was the right amount that it gave you enough of a taster of their combat style to know if you wanted to, if you, to know if you gelled with it more than others, which I thought was really cool. Um, so did that. And then, I don't think I've mentioned this to you yet, Seth, but I've played through, I think, half-ish of the actual story. Oh, neat. I, because you finished the story, eh? Yeah, I finished it. Cool. That was the first thing I did with the game. I I haven't played much Tekken story modes. I know I I know I would have played through the story mode of Dark Resurrection, but that was so many years ago. I forget what happens. Dark Resurrection <laughs> I, I, is what the character episodes would have been, but they would have been like eight fights instead of five. Yeah, that sounds about right. And I did go that back. That, that, well. that was actually quite cool as well. In the gallery, they give you little story recaps of previous Tekken games, so that's quite useful. Yeah, they've been doing that since Tekken Six. I'm pretty sure all the ones for like Tekken One through five are the exact same like resolution from when they rendered them for Tekken 6 <laughs> which cool. they could have updated it but I'm kind of happy they did it that's like a little bit of extra soul that crust to see how old it is I like that uh so I guess I don't know if you want to call out the spoiler warning yeah I'll put a spo- let, let's do a spoiler tag uh, at least for the okay. first half I won't spoil the second half since you're still going through it fair enough so and I don't imagine Steve cares he's probably asleep at the wheel right now um, drifting into uh, oncoming traffic. Um, thinking of how many 14-year-olds we're going to beat this shit out on the weekend. <laughs> and clip. <Oop. laughs> That's uncomfortable <laughs> silence. Uh, um, so I... That was clean and easily editable. <laughs> I don't I remember. You, I don't remember which order, but I one of the most recent things was I was uh, Shao Yu fighting a bunch of Jack 8s. Okay, yeah, yeah. You're like... If that's the last thing you did, that's probably like 60% way, getting close is, to 75%. Is that before or after being uh, being Reina fighting Devil Kazuma? Oh, uh, that's after. Okay, so, so Shaoyu is probably the last thing that I did then. Yeah. Yeah, which I think was like chapter 8-ish, I think. I don't know how many chapters there are, but just for people that are following along at home. And so I'm going to be, I'm going to be real honest. The story is entertaining, but ultimately kind of meaningless to me. <laughs> That's fair. Just, it's all fighting game stories. I, I do want to give a call out to the random quick time events and cutscenes, which the first time I didn't expect. And now I'm just in the back of my mind keeping track of if it could happen. <laughs> okay, so the first time it happens is the first time it's one, is the only time it's one like that. And it's, so for, for the audience context, at the beginning of the game is you're doing Jin versus Kazuya and there's a moment where they, they essentially have rounds, but between rounds they'll do a little bit of a cutscene to do like a phase transition. And Kazuya comes at Jin and you get like an option that says press square to block or press circle to punish him. And that I think that's the only time a um, quick time event like that specific one comes up. But there, there's a few of them that are between phases. And they don't ultimately mean much. Sometimes it's just a difference between you start with a little bit less health or the opponent starts with a little bit less health. Yeah, but it it was still, it threw me real, like, because I, yeah, I, it threw me because I just wasn't expecting a, a quick time event in a, in a fighting game cutscene. Joke's on me, I guess. The, I want to say slight annoyance is with some of the more kind of staged fights. Like, it actually did take me a couple goes to get through it was either Reina versus Devil Kaz- uh, Kazuya or Kazuya versus Azazel. Yeah, those those two took me a little bit as well. Um, okay, I actually hit a glitch with the um the Reina versus uh, Devil Kazuya one. Glitch like positive or negative? Because I I hit negative but funny. Okay, I hit something similar. So what's your one? I basically got a double KO, so I transitioned into the end of the fight, 
and like triggered the cutscene. But then when the cutscene finished, it's like game over, start again. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. My my one was just I think it was just an unfortunate loop in the AI. But Azazel kept doing the I'm just going to make the line in front of me explode, and yeah, in in hindsight probably could have just sidestepped and it wouldn't have been an issue. But in the moment, it's just like, I don't know what I'm expected to do here because I can't approach. <laughs> and I'm used to some fighting games giving me a ranged attack and I don't have that here. <laughs> and so it it did feel a bit cheap when I died to that is the, the one little iffy bit that I had. But The funny thing is, I believe that Devil Kazia does have a ranged attack. It probably does. I, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm just dogging a chemistry lab, smashing yeah, buttons. Yeah, no, I, w- I was doing the same thing. I was kind of like, I it, it also it's also like I've got PTSD from Azazel, where um he is the worst boss in Tekken history. Uh, in Tekken Six, you try to attack him, and he's like, I'm blocking high and low at the same time. Try to get past this. Also, you can't grab me because I'm too big. Yeah, I I can see how that would I can see how that would be the case. So. The, the final thing that I want to touch on, so yeah, halfway through the story, as I say, entertaining. I don't think I'm ever going to replay it or anything. I probably, at the end of it, won't even remember what happened. The one thing that I do want to call out, I really like, I probably should have brought this up with the character episodes thing, but I, I can't think of another game that's done this, or at least done it this well, where you're playing as a character for the first time, and you have no idea, as, as, as I say, you're just a dog in a chemistry lab mashing buttons, but you can switch to what's called striker style, where... Rather than, normally Tekken is um, square and triangle of the two punches, X and circle of the two kicks. And it flips it such that square is always kind of like a a special kind of heavy forwards attack. Circle is always a um, low attack. X is always a counter attack. And triangle is always uh, setting up a combo attack. And it makes it really, really nice (laughs) when it just gives you a button where it doesn't feel like cheating because you're not just getting a free win, but you feel like you're able to play better than your skill level with the character should allow. Yeah, it gives you like an air com, like an air juggle combo to use, and then the others are like situational, am I getting the right read with this button type of an attack? Yeah, and it's it's just a really nice touch that if if you're good at a character, and I, I actually know this from first time experience, like I'm I'm good enough in my head with some of the characters, I'm going to get my ass kicked online, I know that. Seth does a good job of that anyway. But I'm, I'm comfortable enough with some of the characters that I don't need that on, and it actually trips me when it is on accidentally. Like, if I just hit the button and don't realize, and then my, my button presses are, are not doing what I expect. Uh, so there are some that I, I can't turn it on for, but there are others where, like, it ju- it's just that nice balance of... I've spent a lot of time playing as, say, Jin, just because he's a title character, and that was just the easy one to play most of Arcade Quest with. And so when you then randomly swap to someone else, it doesn't feel like you've wasted all that time because you still have the mechanical knowledge of what should happen. You just don't know the button input. And Tekken's like, don't worry, got you, bro. Here, here's some rebindings to, to give you some of the, the easy ends, um, which I, I really, really like and appreciate. As a, I've been around fighting games for ages, but I guess fighting game returning newbie might be the right way to describe it. Those are all the major points that I want to hit for Tekken 8. What do you want to add to, I guess? Yeah, I just want to touch a little bit more on the story in that the story oh no, here is... here come the spoilers. La 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 la. <laughs> the story <laughs> is simple. Like, break it down to its bare minimum is... It's a, a Jin redemption story of he started a world war with Tekken 6. He... And he's been hey, out of the picture for there. a little bit. But um, Kazuya is basically continuing that war and it, the only person that can stop him is Jin. So he's uh, he's uh, trying to deal with like his internal struggle of I've got the devil blood in me as well. I don't deserve to live. I've committed atrocities, blah, blah, blah. And it yeah, it's just a simple story of how he's going to grow as a character over the course of like the events of this game. The events themselves don't matter all that much, but it's kind of like a fun roller coaster. But when but the big moments that make it really entertaining are just the big set piece fights. Like the beginning opening up on the Jin versus Kazuya fights. They open it up by Jin. He sees Kazuya in a helicopter while he's riding a motorbike. So he drives up a wall with his <laughs> motorbike so he can do a backflip off it and then throw the motorbike into the helicopter. And this everyone the dies except for Kazuya. 
Kazuya yeah, just okay. lets himself, uh, walks out of the ru- uh, wreckage. It's like, did you really think that was going to work? Yeah. And the reason why part of me was sort of, so that, that was the entertaining angle when I said that the story was entertaining. I kind of wanted that to be the continuation, but it takes itself more seriously. And in some ways that detracts. I appreciate it when they take it seriously. Like if it was trying to be a little too humorous, I'd grown a little bit. But the fact that this is just like the worlds that these characters live in where they're this powerful and it's kind of a little melodramatic and taken seriously, I can kind of get behind it. But that's also because I read and watch a lot of shonen anime and manga. So I I just kind of gel with this vibe. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that actually. Yeah, continue. But yeah, um, when, so like, there's a lot of like small stuff, like just leading up to where Patrick is in the story. There's like, hey, there's, uh, Kazuya's like, everyone's after my head. So I'm going to start, well, I, I basically control the world. So I'm going to do a big King of Iron Fist tournament and all the nations are going to have one big repre- representative that, that represents their nation. And if they lose, that country is wiped off the map. They're, they're considered too weak. They're not, they're not fit enough to live in my utopia. Um, and all this is just so he can kind of set up for his own ambitions. But like these lead to crescendo ink fights like Jin versus Huarang in an arena to see who um, represents uh, uh, Japan as the Japan uh, representative. And that's a big cutscene fight um, that has some cool moments. And there's a few small neat things like um, when you're fighting Kazuya, um, Jin's Rage Art, which is like his big super move of the game, is his normal gameplay one where he launches uh, the opponent in the air, then he uses his devil powers to do a big powered up punch. But then after he loses to Kazuya, he loses like some of his self-confidence and he can't call on the devil powers anymore. So they change his Rage Art. And I think that's like a really cool gameplay uh, demonstration of like how the character is progressing through the story. And as you get deeper into the game, they do more and more cool things of how um, character progression is viewed through gameplay. There's a lot of really cool ones. And there's one I really want to say, but I, I feel like if I say it, I'm going to give it away for Patrick when it's going to happen. And I think I'll hold on to that for now. But they, they do a lot of cool stuff with the mechanics of the game and how they work. And even callbacks to older games and how those work to tell the story in a really fun way, gameplay-wise. I agree with all of that and look forward to that moment. Um, the one thing that I would say uh, on top of that is that it's not just the rage art that uh, changes as well, because Jin is the character that I've played the most with, and so I have some bread and butter combos that I like to use. And as it turns out, a lot of my bread and butter combos Rely on him tapping into his devil power. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because Tekken 8 Jin has a lot of um, devil Jin moves in his moveset, so you don't have access to those when he's not able to tap into the devil power. And boy, does it throw off your timing when it's like, and now the big attack comes, and then the big attack doesn't come, and you're like, well, shit. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of cool things what they do, do, do to play around with Jin um, and his moveset in this game, and that is, that is the extent of I can say about the <laughs> story spoilers with Jin. Fair enough. Yeah, I part of me really wanted to get it done before recording this, but I also don't think it would have been realistic for that to be like in the next few days. So this weekend I should have the rest of it finished, so I'm sure we'll discuss the, the remainder of the story. I think you have like trip, another but... hour and a half to two hours left of it, the story. Sure, yeah. But yeah, the, the story I super enjoyed. There's a lot of, and it's also because I noticed a lot of the callback stuff they did in cutscenes. Another thing I'll throw in, there's an alternate ending. Um, Patrick, when it like, it, they, they try to hide it from you. So I'll just, I'll just put it out there that you replay the final chapter of the game. And when you're in the final, final phase, you can lose the um, fights to get an alternate ending. Ah. And the alternate ending is pretty funny. But yeah, generally, I enjoyed where they took the story and how things played out. I got really excited during the final fight, like I thought it was a really entertaining fight. And this story mode is firing on so many more cylinders than the Tekken 7 story did. So I think this is like one of the better stories in like just presentation wise and like the cool factor of the the fights. It's one of the best um, fighting game stories in the genre. 
Big words, big words. But I agree. Street Fighter uh, six people on uh, Suicide Watch, I guess. I'm the Street Fighter six person. I know. And he is on Suicide Watch. Although. But I'm a bigger Tekken person than I am a Street Fighter person. But look, as much as I don't want to continue this conversation for another 30 minutes, um, you talked about the story, all well and good. I do appreciate stories in fighting games. How's the fighting, but? Fighting is great. Fighting is okay. really it's good. Good, do not elaborate. I did not ask. <laughs> you, you literally did ask. You asked how the fight scene is. I asked, I asked how it is, and you said it's good, and then we're done. Why is everyone asking how it is? No one's asking why it is. That's the real question. Probably because it's a fighting game. As Patrick game. will know between, <laughs> by experiencing me doing it and then experiencing himself doing it, every now and then you just kind of enter a fugue state where you press buttons that you figure will work, and they do, <laughs> and you just get a perfect round on your opponent, and you just look at- you just, Well, we're on voice call, so we just scream at the other person, what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> and so second true. feels very good when you do that. It it does feel really good, but it is confusing because like we we we've done actually shit. What what was the stat like sixty rounds or something? No. That was the first day we did sixty matches. And sixty matches. That's to, fucked. To give, that's crazy. To give you like some props, you won twenty three of those. Wow, that's so many more than I thought. <laughs> I I think I think my win rate on the second night was just fucking plummeted though. Yeah, I think a lot of that was when you were using the simple controls with Lars and I was trying to figure out what the fuck Lily did. And then the next <laughs> day we played, I was like, oh, this is how Lily works. Why didn't I figure this out the first day? Hmm. I, I really... The, the fighting is good enough, right? That, again, relating it to things that I've played more recently. In Smash, I like a good meme combo of picking up someone as Donkey Kong and throwing them off the side or the suicide dive with um, Bowser, all that, all that good shit. Ah. It's, it's always fun. Um, here- May I introduce you to your, uh, your favorite, as you've coined him, meth head ninja, Yoshimitsu, <laughs> and the fact that he can just turn around and stab himself with his sword. And if the opponent is close enough, it also stabs them. See, I remember doing that in Dark Resurrection and thought it was the funniest shit on the planet. <laughs> I'll give you a I'll give you a spoiler. It's still the funniest shit in the world. <laughs> I tried doing it to it Azazel in his character story, but Azazel's just too big and wouldn't let me. Oh, it's a shame. How many how many ghosts did it take? <laughs> um I tried <laughs> it maybe bleeding out. <laughs> I tried it maybe five times and he hits me every single time, like he hit me oh. out of it. And then I lost a round, so I had to do a, another go at him. And Fair then enough. I accidentally killed him before I could give it another attempt. <laughs> Uh, but no, to 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 put the um, the difference. So uh, I've also played Mortal Kombat, and I've asked this one a bunch as well. Five, I think, also as well. No, the, nine. The P- you said the PS3 one for that one. I'm pretty sure the, that this, was this nine. one. Was the PS3 one? Okay, so yeah. that one was nine. Okay, Tekken Five, Mortal Kombat Nine. Sweet. Um, and what's the newest Kombat, Mortal Kombat? The, the 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 newest one is just Mortal Kombat. Mortal so Kombat we, we, One. We, yeah, we're, we're starting again. Fucking hate that. Anyway, um, in in Mortal Kombat Nine, you would play someone, or like a CPU or a bot or whatever it was. You, you you'd be in a match and you're like, ah, the character that just beat me has some interesting moves. I want to go try out those moves. And it would always be a few moves or maybe a combo. And I'm thinking like, I really liked Baraka's quick like knife swipe or some of Katana's flowy fan combos, that kind of shit. But it was always kind of gimmicky and surface level. I've really enjoyed the Tekken fighting game uh, style where you play as someone, like, even, even getting my ass kicked by Seth, and it's like, ah, oh, that character looks to be able to do some really cool things. And you look at their moveset, and you're like, ah, oh, this moveset is really interesting. And then you realize that you moveset can't of fucking... 150 moves. Yeah, and you realize you can't execute on any of it, and you're like, this is fucking horrendous, but it doesn't stop you wanting to. So, like, an example, Seth will know this one. I, I randomed Raven in a fight with Seth, and I just could not for the life of me make it work. It, it, just, it just didn't gel. But I've, I've fought so many Raven CPUs since, I, I really want to figure out Raven, because every time I'm against one, it's the coolest shit ever. I, I also played as Raven afterwards doing his character episode after we had that, and I was like, hold on, there's some cool stuff here if you press square and triangle or X and circle at the same time. That, that's what I'm realizing, is that you just need to know the secret code, where it's only about one or two secret codes per character. 
But once you know the secret code, you're good. You can then link stuff together and, and, and it feels good. And I think the fugue state is you accidentally hitting the secret code button. Yeah. Because like the, the dive kick with Jin, for example, I didn't realize I could just go into off of a simple setup. And I know that simple setup now, and it's great. And like you look through the, the combo list and like nine out of ten of them use some part of that setup. And it's like, okay, I can see how the strings together now. And then similarly with Lars, I really liked how Lars played because of some of the fugue state hits I randomly got into. Looked at some of wow, his combos. Isn't that the guy from Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 2? Yes. He even his his rage art in the game is a callback to his Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 2 Ultimate Dream. Get 2. Fucked. Okay, that's fucking sick. <laughs> I just came in here to say that. I was I, waiting for you guys to bring up Lars. I, I have no context, but sounds based. Very funny. Very based, I might even say. <laughs> but but the same sort of thing of like jumped in, played a few Lars combos and like, ah, oh, this is this is the secret code. Yeah, so I imagine there's a secret code for Raven and you know, when I'm next playing and I'm and maybe I'll be like, ah, oh, let's go figure out Raven's secret code, that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's it's really hard to describe, but it's a really cool feeling when you want to get better as a character. Not to play the like gimmicky move when you're online versus your friend, but just you because know, getting the on way... top of Yoshimitsu's sword and then jumping at them, <laughs> the fucking crab walk. <laughs> but but just oh, the... there's a Fina crab walk. The what? Zafina's crab walk. Oh yeah, no, no, I I, I meant um, uh, I meant Yoshimitsu walking around on uh on the the sort of like oh yeah, where he's the... running on top of them. Yeah 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 yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, no, it's it's just cool where like the styles feel so differently, and so you jump to a character like I, I jumped to Leroy for Leroy's character thing, and I could see what he was trying to do, but it just felt so different to other character styles that I'd played that it was tripping me up. Yeah, that was another one I lost a lot with, where it was uh, you were playing Huarang and I was uh, playing Leroy, and it's like one of the first times I picked up Leroy, I'd like played him once in Tekken Seven, mm. and. I can see his game plan, but it was trying to figure out how to make that work for me. Yeah. Like I kept doing yeah, yeah. a lot of characters have a punch on their back and triangle, but his back and triangle is a parry. And so I kept accidentally doing that. And then you'd get a big whiff punish on me and like a good job on you for taking advantage of me doing that. But it's also like, Oh, this character feels weird and I'm going to need some time to figure him out. And I'm getting punished for trying to do things that are like hard coded in my brain and I need to work around them with him. Mm. Anyway, uh, we probably bored Steve enough. Um, that's all I want to say about Tekken 8. There's I... one more thing I want to throw in there and I think it's one okay. of the coolest features in the game. Is that you can, um... at any point earlier, but fuck it. Sure. Oh, the replay thing. The replay thing. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. Um... yeah okay. Quick, quick summary of that because uh... that shit is fucking cool. <laughs> So, so Stephen, uh, Stephen, let's say, let's say you're playing a round of um of um Pokemon, and you, no, you, no, you get no. your ass handed to you pretty badly. Seth, Seth, yep, let's, okay, let, I'm there. Very Seth, easy. Let, let, let's let's put this in terms that Steve understands. Steve, imagine that at the end of this, what is nearly a forty minute Tekken conversation, you wanted to replay the conversation. <laughs> No, no, I need to put it in a, in a terms where he doesn't fall asleep. That's why I'm bringing Pokemon into this. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so gotcha, imagine gotcha. the 14-year-old, like, absolutely sweeps your team. You, you have no idea what to do. I'm there. Seth, it's just Seth, kind of Seth, counted Seth. everything you're, you've thrown at them. Seth, let me just pull you to the side real quick. We, we, we legally can't have Steve imagining 14-year-olds again. That's... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right, that was a clever one. That was clever. I'll give you that. I hate it, but it's clever. So yeah, let, let's say, I, I, I actually don't know if Pokemon has this, but let's say you, you save your replay of that fight, and you, most of the time you just, like, you just kind of comb over it going, oh, I could have, what could have I done different? What could have done different? But then you're like, you're not knowledgeable enough about the game to actually know that yourself. Sometimes you need someone else to look over that for you. Well, in Tekken, they have this whole thing where it, as it's going through the replay, it's like, oh, hey, you blocked here. They were pretty unsafe here. You could have pressed this button. Or, hey, you did this launcher, but you didn't take advantage of it. Next time, he's like, when you do this attack, try this string of attacks to do a combo and get some extra damage in. And it'll pause, pause a replay to show you that command list. And it'll also let you practice them. And at any point in the replay, you can also just take control of either your character or your opponent's character and try to figure out how to get out of certain situations that might have been a tough call for you. It's a really in-depth replay feature that's actually going to be really good at teaching people how to play the game. 
Yeah, so let, yeah, let, right, let, that, let me just pretty cool. re- rephrase that because there's two different things that go on here. So one, while you watch the replay, the game just gives you free things of like, oh, you blocked, fucking dumbass. You should have you should have done this instead and just gives you the button, the button inputs that it thinks would be better for you. And most of the time it's right. So that, that's part one. That's already super useful. Really cool that it does that. Part two is that it will then go, and if you wanted to try that for realsies, you can just take over your character in this replay right now and it'll just stick an AI on the replay character to just, like, continue how it behaves. Um, and you can actually just try that out. You don't even need to take control of the replay. There's also an option to go, we'll just put you into the training room and reset up that situation. Yeah, so the, the, there's all of that, which is just top tier, just quality yeah, of life. Right. That's pretty cool. I'll give you that. All right. You've, uh, you haven't convinced me, but um, <laughs> that's a pretty cool feature. Cool. Uh, I guess, I guess, uh, quick ratings. Uh, what, what, what are we thinking, Seth? I'm thinking like a nine out of 10. Seth, uh, if you just, if you just step over here, uh, it's taken eight. Legally, we can't give it above an eight. <laughs> otherwise it's going to. No, no. See, see it, it ate nine. So the nine is inside its stomach. <laughs> Ooh, hang on. You might be on something here. <laughs> Interesting. Love those okay. Jokes. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm on board. I'll allow Good, it. I turned it around. <laughs> so yeah, a nine out of ten for me. Yeah, and I, I would probably also give it a, a nine out of ten. I, I, I was kind of hoping. Or I'm just, I, I got to read this one verbatim. So I had this, I had this thing written down. I was kind of hoping that Seth would give it a, a ten out of ten. Um, Seth, you just humor me and say that you give Tekken Eight a ten out of ten. Tekken Eight is a ten out of ten. Perfect video game. Nothing will beat it. I can't believe you gave Tekken Eight a te- ten. Ladies and gentlemen. Not your best, big fella. Not your best. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> get him off the stage. Yeah, well, I te- can, I te- can't get enough of this game. That, that was you my know backup. What? Hit random select and get Yoshi Mitsu again. <laughs> <laughs> to, 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 fill, to fill people listening to this. I, first of all, I sent videographic evidence of this to Seth. He has confirmed it. I hit the random button three times in a row. And three times in a row, I got Yoshi Mitsu. I hit random in a row a couple of times. 32 characters. Yeah. Yeah, and then I hit I hit uh, random another couple times. Got a couple characters on actual random, and then double randomed uh, Feng. Feng. Yeah, and then double randomed Feng. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> the game has I'm decided who your now. main and your secondary are. And both of them are Yoshimitsu. <laughs> 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 anyway, that is Tekken Eight done and dusted. And with that, we come to the end of Round the Lounge for this week. Uh, thank you to you both uh, and myself. Feels weird being able to contribute to a game that came out this year. Or even recently. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, once again, all I ask is that at the end of 2024, I don't have a fucking mobile game in my top five. That's, that's all I'm after. Current track uh, is simple, looking too good. Simple needs. <laughs> Current track we, record is looking It's pretty much awful. already February. You've already wasted the first month of the year, Pat. Get your shit together. <laughs> that was a bit of a wake-up call. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, fuck. Do you want to, like, pull it back a peg, or are we just going to no. play? There's already been, like, three Game of the Year nominees that have come out. Yeah, name, name three of them. Uh, Tekken 8, uh, Yakuza, uh, well, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, and that new Prince of Persia oh, game. Was, oh, and, and the Last of Us Part 2, and the Last of Us Part 2 remastered. We don't, we don't give uh, Game of the Year to early access games. I do. Well, the real question is, Seth, would you give a tech of the year to something that Disney's been cooking up, uh, a omnidirectional treadmill type job? I'm, the, what, what do they even call it? I, I've already fucked up trying to enter this. They call it the hollow tile. There we go. Coming out of Disney research. This looks kind of interesting. As a contractor that is contracted by Disney right now, like, well, a contractor- <laughs> I'm obligated to say. <laughs> as a contractor for a company that is contracted with doing a Disney show right now, I am legally obligated to say that Disney's uh, uh, engineers are fantastic and any invention they make is groundbreaking and worth for the research funds. I'm sorry, you said engineer. Do you want to get shot? I said imagine is. Disney's uh, uh, engineers, engineers, engineers. Good. That's what I thought you said. You, know what? you can call off the strike. <laughs> I'll, look, I'll say it because nobody else will. That's a fucking sick name. I want to be an Imagineer. I've always known myself to be an ideas guy. <laughs> oh, so we're not even talking about the thing they've made. You're just hung up on the title. Oh, no, I don't care what they made. They'll, Disney does shit like this all the time. Walt had some good ideas, all right? When he came up with titles for things, he was spot on. Oh, anyway, so the whole tile, it's, it's not a treadmill. 
because it doesn't move in response to you. It just shifts you back to the center of the tile, which is quite cool. Which means that because it's a whole bunch of different, uh, I don't know, like, like uh, d different single like pieces on, on the floor, it means you can have multiple people moving on it at once, which, which is quite interesting. Think of it like those, like those arrow platforms in like Pokemon that like push you and you spin <laughs> when you're in the wrong area. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I, yeah, probably. Uh, are we wrong? Send us one, Disney. Let us know. <laughs> we'll, we'll test it and then, and then you know we'll, we'll, we'll ironically, un it. No, unironically, Disney, if you want me to make a, uh, a mid-review about it, uh, send it through. A mid-review even. <laughs> I'm not going to bother saying my address. You probably know it. <laughs> you want to get in contact at www.twitch.tv forward slash Patrick went to Japan. <laughs> Holy shit, what another what about Kai that? underscore Burr? <laughs> no, no, we're shilling Patrick's uh, Twitch right now. Cool, well, I guess we're finished talking about the holo tile. Thank no, you to you both for mentioning to. fucking anything about it. I'm trying my hardest here, <laughs> holy shit. How does this relate to me, a professional Pokemon player? Ah, uh, VR Pokemon. <laughs> yeah? You Trying Disney not to make a 14-year-old's joke right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a Disney and Pokemon collaboration. That'll be the two biggest companies in the world, man. Ooh, might be onto something there. But yeah, a lot of people are like, like um, sci-fi fans are like, oh yeah, this is going to make like the dream of the Hollow Deck so much more realistic or like closer to uh, fulfillment because this is bas this is essentially a walking mat where like you're not going to as, as you like while you're walking forwards, you're not going to go anywhere, you're not going to run to a wall, you've got limitless space to just keep walking forward. See, I, I can test that. I, I, I absolutely believe if I wanted to, I could still run into a wall. Oh yeah, it looks like it's just for walking. If you try to just like sprint on this, you're going to go off it. Yeah. Anyway, very cool tech. We should move on because this has already taken way too long for what we wanted to talk about. Up next, we have a cool little shadowy droppy type deal. Uh, Celeste 64. Uh, a little uh, 3D sequel thing made in like roughly a week with the team behind Celeste to celebrate six years, which also side point, holy shit, it's been six years. That does not feel like a game that came out six years ago. I haven't played it. I will say one thing, and this is of no... <laughs> Fuck it, me. Well, there was, there was a long enough silence that I can say things. Um, no, it was, it was barely there. <laughs> no, too late. It was, the silence is deafening. Why does, like, everything that becomes, like, a 3D platform will have, like, 64 at the end of it? Like, I understand the, the Mario 64 legacy, but there's this. Um, there was, like, Bubsy 64 that came out last year or the year before that. Um, and there's probably a bunch of other things that I don't know. Like, what's with that? Can't they just call it Celeste 3D? It's real simple, Steve. Shut if up. I give you a high five. <laughs> <laughs> wow, rude, Seth. If I, if I give you a high five, right? And we're already at 64. What does that make it? Oh, I don't want one. to give him the funny number. Um, it makes it 59. Nice. No, it makes it 59 because nice. I've done the swish thing. <laughs> oh, swish. The... <laughs> so I've taken five from you. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Get, get swished. Get swished. Doesn't use dungeon. <laughs> um, yeah, this, this looks kind of interesting. I, I think it's... Uh, I don't really have too many thoughts on this. We, we've discussed Celeste. Uh, and my enjoyment of the game, but also slight, like, underwhelmingness for how much I was supposed to enjoy it from what everyone was telling me about it. So, I don't know, cool that they're celebrating six years, and um, really cool that they're doing, like, an actual game to do that celebration. But yeah. I'm not sure if it'll, if it'll be something that, that I pay attention to. What about you guys? I'll give it a check out because, A, it's free, and B, I feel like I might enjoy a 3D platformer that Celeste is trying to do a little more than a 2D platformer. I need to play Celeste. That's my comment on this. Cool. Well, you may enjoy the 3D platformer more than the 2D platformer, but would you enjoy Berserk Boy launching on March 6th? Oh, yeah. This looks right up my alley. I showed this to a friend and I was like, hey, do you like Sonic? Like, knowing full well that this man loves Sonic. And then I was like, hey, do you like Mega Man? <laughs> This this game I found uh, called Berserk Boy is like the perfect Reese's peanut butter cup of those two franchises, where Sonic is the chocolate and Mega Man is the peanut butter. I hate Reese's peanut butter cups. Chocolate and peanut butter shouldn't mix. Racist. You just call me a racist. <laughs> <laughs> a 
that might be the best thing you've been called all night. <laughs> yeah, uh, most tame thing I've been called all night. But no, I, I, I was right. It just hit me like a second later. But yeah, no, this game actually does look like Mighty Number no. Nine. I was gonna say like Mega Man Zero. It looks like the Mega Man Zero games, and they give you like all the um Mega Man inspired power ups. But there's also a lot of Sonicisms, and like you got well, it's high speed action at one, and then it's um. The main character also looks like a humanoid Sonic character, but it also gives you a homing attack. So it's kind of like combining a lot of aspects between both Sonic and Mega Man. So I'm kind of keen to see how well they combine. Unfortunate for this game, it's coming out in March, which means I'm probably not going to get it day one. I'm sure they'll survive. You'll get it 75% off at the end of the year. That's all games should be bought. It's an indie game. I don't think they can lose too many sales. Wow, rough. I'm going to tell them you said that. It's also only coming to Switch and Steam. Hang on. No Game it, Pass chats for this one. It, they've announced versions for everything else, uh, but there's no really dates for that. So, um, who knows? No, what do I care? I'm not going to play this game. You would if it was on Game Pass. <laughs> uh, there's so many games on Game Pass, my friend. Still oh, yeah? play Kingdom is, Hearts. Is, is, is Pizza Tower on Game Pass? Uh, I don't think so, no. Well, that's I a shame. Game Pass isn't great. Yeah, is Power World on Game Pass? Yeah, that's another reason why uh, Game Pass isn't great. <laughs> yeah, you have to fill it up with early access games, not enough real oh. games to fill up that catalog. Okay, I, I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start asking guy. the real questions. No one else has been asking this. Where are the late release games? Uh, <laughs> Actually, wait, that's that that that's Kill the Suicide Squad. Never mind, we'll get to that. <laughs> no, no, that's still early access. Uh, take take. Uh, let, let's uh, let's move on. Let's get to there. Oh, that's why you made the Pizza Tower reference. <laughs> Holy uh, shit. Uh, Expand your mind, Steve, please. Um, so, Pizza Tower uh, is getting a, a free update, and uh, our own Pizza Tower is, is here to tell us about it, Seth. Yeah, so Tour de Pizza has uh, released a new gameplay cl- clip that shows uh, they're adding the character and also, like, one of the bosses of the game, The Noise, who's just, like, legally uh, distinct to uh, The Noid. The added bonus of also being one of the honeymooners in how much he hates his wife. <laughs> but it could be a classic boomer moment. <laughs> classic boomer moment. Yeah, and they're adding like a new game mode where they're going, yeah, so essentially there's basically just like a new game plus mode for people that are uh, like for, for our fans. So I'm interested. I'll give it a check. I, my main complaint about Pizza Tower was that I didn't think there was enough tower to pizza. <laughs> So having more the tower to pizza, you loved your wife too much. <laughs> having more tower to pizza is a very welcome thing for me, and doing it for free is uh, incredibly based. Much like pizza base, perhaps. Oh, hang on, let him marinate. Yeah. So you see, the problem was that it was a thin crust. I like mine deep dish. No, not deep dish. No, you just don't. Deep no, pan. you don't like deep. No, 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 no. Deep pan. Ch- Chicago I- style pizzas are fucking they're pies. You, you don't like them, Steph. I prefer the you ones like where they crust. put like a full-on fucking cheeseburger in the crust. Otherwise, why would you eat the crust? No, no. See, over here we have the four and twenty crust, where it's actually oh, a right. meat pie in the crust. That's right. I completely fucking forgot about that. That's gonna raise my memory for good. Point. <laughs> I had one slice of that pizza and I gained forty fucking kilos. Man. I never had it. I never did. You're oh, you're missing out. The nectar of the gods. Australian Jesus eats that, I reckon. You know, you know what was a real nectar of the gods? The uh, KFC double down. Never. Oh, no, I don't miss that. I was on my shredding aspect of my life when that came out. And I just refused to eat it. Was it good? I got halfway through it and felt like I was going to have a heart attack. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yum. I, I actually went into a grease-induced coma after having like three quarters of it. I love you finish how- it. You finish it. You didn't waste food. Yeah. No, no, I love how in that story, I felt like I was going to have a heart attack at one half. Yeah, and I, I got to three quarters. <laughs> I went into a grease coma. There's one quarter there where you're like, let's just roll the dice. <laughs> that last quarter was wasted. I'm sorry, Stephen. Uh, the co- the coma right. hit too hard. I can't believe the rubbish bin got the double down for 25% off. It might have been. It might have been two of the dogs. You gave it to your dog. You nearly had a heart attack, and you thought, "Yeah, no, I'm gonna give it to the dogs." This fucking guy. <laughs> I mean, giving them like a small piece of chicken each isn't going to do much for them. It's KFC double down. <laughs> Man, there are kids starving in Africa. Yeah, uh, my dogs are starving. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not true. I feed my dogs well. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's Peter. Look out, Peter. Um, I know. That's Don't know where that's going. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, but- <laughs> What we what we do know where it's going is 
some DLC for- fuck, I can't make this work. I'm so- I tried. Seth, what, what's the Grand Blue update? Yeah, so Grand Blue is getting the, um, the woman that is in every single game known as 2B. She cannot be stopped. She will invade every game, even your favorite one. Uh, she's coming out February 20. I don't remember uh, if we were recording Seth, when she was originally announced. Seth, you can't say that because then 2B will be in Power World and that leads to a whole bunch of just problems for society. Yeah, but if uh, Yoko Taro gets paid, he doesn't care. <laughs> he, he has gone on record and said he will put 2B in anything as long as they're willing to pay. It's actually such a Chad mentality. I love that. Yeah, right, I like it. I'll, I'll allow it. But yeah, not, not much to say here other than, yeah, she's coming out February 20, and along with that is going to be a big game update. And also a, a Battle Pass costume, because we need to add FOMO to this game. But since, it, since this is a tiny, tiny fighting game corner, I'll also just roll into Under Night 2 showed off its three DLC characters by just showing their character profiles and, like, one screenshot of what they look like in-game. Their character is called Uzuki, who is a necromancer. Ogre, who's got some ability called Oblivion Bane. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. It's probably some sort of Undernight Law thing. And Uz Izumi, whose ability is Transition, which might also be a Undernight's Law thing, or it could be that they're trans. Either way, will work for people. <laughs> like, <laughs> they'll be big fans of her. Yeah, all we know is what they look like. Uh, the characters are releasing like six months from each other. So this is going to roll out really slowly as a season pass. But also worth noting is that if you bu like Under Nights just came out, came out the same day Tekken 8 did. And if you buy it in the first two months of its release, you get a season pass for free. So have you bought it? Not yet. My money, uh, my money had to go somewhere else first. I, I did not have PlayStation Plus, so I had to buy into that scam. Yeah, I'm, I'm, be I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Do not buy games at release. If you didn't see, if you waited a year to buy Tekken at two bucks, I got that. I got that as a gift. Oh, you, sorry, you said that. Yeah. Um. The, all right then. Well, how many? Yeah, but like you got that as a gift, but then you pre-ordered a different edition to get like another figurine, right? No. No, oh. it was the soundtrack. Ah, oh, of course. Sorry, it was a digital <laughs> only sound. No, it was a soundtrack, but he doesn't have a CD player. Please, yeah. that, that. God, that boils my piss. <laughs> But I am not a collector. I do not. I do not like having things. I like my bookshelf being full of things. Books. I do have the Chainsaw Man books there and the Scott Pilgrim books. But it's not. But if you've got things other than um, books, and it's, it's no longer a bookshelf. It's a shelf. <laughs> it's not girlfriend. It's it's friend who is a girl. <laughs> 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 So anyway, how about that <laughs> Dragon Ball Z Kakarot DLC? All right, Dragon Ball time. Finally, a hey, good fighting game. My man. This is an RPG. Uh, um, uh, it's got fighting in it. Um, I'll, 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 um, uh, hey, it's me, Steven. I don't know, said in the Goku voice. Um, but they've released... Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to say, so I just said something dumb. Um, so they've an announced the next Dragon Ball Kakarot um, DLC, Goku's Next Journey. It is uh, what takes place, I think it's six years after the Battle with Boo. Yeah, um, the, the end of Z. Z series. Yeah, the end of Z, we're like, uh, oobs there and him and Goku fight because for some reason Goku needs someone else to fight. That's not fucking Vegeta for whatever reason. <laughs> but that's, it's cool. It's, it's, it's different. Um, so we sort of, the, the, I'm sure long time viewers uh, and listeners will remember that the last DLC they announced was uh, the King Piccolo DLC. Um, that was sort of like the first, yeah, it's the Dragon Ball series and that was sort of like the introduction and then they had the main game and then the DLC, the third DLC is, uh, this, which is pretty cool. So I was, I was watching this trailer and it kind of hit me like small, small Dragon Ball lore tangents. It kind of hit me how silly it is that this is the end of Z and now we have super in between this and kid boo dying where it's like after everything that happens in super and how much the power scale has gone up we end the series on goku's greatest uh, challenge and the thing he's most excited about is fighting the reincarnation of kid boo someone that he should be overpowering now it's it's it's, it's, it's don't think about it don't think about it man you, you you're wasting your time like it's it's i think technically it's no longer canon Simply no, because, like, no, it's the still super canon. Stuff. Super is before this. They, they, 
were very adamant about not wanting to go past the end of Z. Like, this is Toriyama's yeah. ending, and they didn't want to touch further than that. This film is super canon. Unfortunately, it is. I know. I'm well aware super is canon, but it just because it, just they've got five years of space to fill it. It's fucking dumb. There you go. I said it. Like the whole, yeah, I'm there for the fights. This is cool. DLC is cool. Will I get it? Maybe. Um, I did really like Kakarot. Everybody remember my review of it last year. Um, you know what? Great question. How much does this cost? I will look it up. But yeah, no, it's super exciting that, that Kakarot's getting some like, more DLC love. I think this probably will be the last one. Uh, it's not going to do a Budokai... No, not Budokai. Uh, Xenoverse 2 and just be alive for fucking 70 years. Yeah, there's only so many Dragon Ball stories they can tell before they run out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and also on more Dragon Ball news... Yeah, um, uh, something I forgot to put on the docket, actually. Um, right after they did this, they also did the Dragon Ball Fighters uh, the rollback netcode update and the PS5 and Xbox Series update. They delayed it again. Uh, oh, I, I, at this point, I wouldn't believe it was real un- if I hadn't played it already. If I had not played that uh, beta, I would not believe that rollback was actually coming to that game. It's, it probably still isn't coming to that game, but... Yeah, no, they, they announced it's delayed a little bit again. They're going to give more information in the spring, I think it was, which is like autumn for us. What the fuck? This is, um, I was looking at the season pass for Dragon Ball Kakarot. 60 fucking dollars. Holy shit. That's as much as the game. Yeah, the game's cheaper at the moment. It's like 30 bucks. It's on sale. They're having a fucking laugh at this. I can oh. ah. But in real Dragon Ball news, they showed off a new trailer for Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, or as we like to call it, Spudokai Tenkaichi 4. And Yeah, we, we do like to call it that, eh? <laughs> yeah, just, just, to, um, just to keep people on track of where we are with this game. The trailer is, like highlights the rivalry between Goku and Vegeta, and my, my personal <laughs> pop-off in this trailer was when they showed... Yes, you can, in fact, transform into a great ape and play as it. We've been missing oh, that for way too long. Yeah, I fucking hate it. Um, I, yeah, I thought it was funny how they did that. The Dragon Ball Z, well, the Dragon Ball Kakarot DLC is fighting with Oob, but that, like, the Budokai Tenkaichi, or Shining Zero, Sparkling, Dragon Ball Sparkling, as it's officially technically sparking. called. Sparking. Oh, spa- oh, I've always fucking thought it was Sparkling. Huh, can't read. It was just a fight between Goku and Vegeta. Uh, it makes sense because it like goes through all of their transformations to show that off. It does, it does. But it's also quite interesting how they've um they did like a screenshot of not a screenshot, but like they uh zoomed out on how many characters they've got in like little uh, hexagons or whatever. Yep, and a lot of mad lads went and counted it, and it seems like we're going to have 164 characters, including transformations. Which is three more than what Budokai Tenkaichi 3 had, but also probably means we're going to get less characters because we're going to get more forms of Goku and Vegeta. And speaking of, they have officially announced 24 characters for this roster, like, like officially named on their blog and their website. Uh, 11 of these are Goku and 13 of them are Vegeta. <laughs> How many of them are Steve? None. Well, there's, no, there's no room left. Like, it's... 164 characters and fucking half of them are Goku, the other half of Vegeta. What a fucking scam. Steve made um, it into Tekken instead. He did. He did. Is, is he the <laughs> boxer guy? He is. Yeah. Oh, see, fucking, I, I'm telling you, I should have been a boxer. I just, I just don't like being hit, so that's why I didn't do it. Cool. Don't really know what to springboard off of that one. I guess, thanks for that update, pal. Speaking of pals... Man, really, I'm just scraping the bottom <laughs> that, of the barrel. That, that, was, that, was a little, that was a little rough. You'll, you'll get it next no, time. Okay, yeah, you'll get it next time. time. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Um, so, Steam sales, 8 million in less than six days. Obviously, this is uh, just pulling absolute numbers, but I, I think we also need to remember in all of these that Steam takes, what, like a 30% cut? Something like that, yeah. So, I mean, Steam's making a pretty penny off this game, too. Yeah. Oh, Steam always wins. I, I also want to throw in that I only linked this article on our docket, but as I was going through uh, Gamatsu articles, there was a point where it was three articles in a row. Uh, PAL World Sales Update, PAL World Sales Update, PAL World <laughs> Sales Update. I mean, even, even in this one, uh, so 
uh, Steam version hit 1 million in 8 hours, 2 million in 24 hours, 3 million in 40 hours. Steve, how long did it, re- how long did it take to, to reach uh, 4 million units? Uh, seven, no, three days. I was kind of hoping you'd guess, but you just read it off the article. That's fine. Oh, I actually didn't. Um, no, I didn't have it open. Oh, um, you actually just guessed three days? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I knew it was like <laughs> it fucking being astronomical. I knew it had 8 million today, so I just halved it, essentially. Fuck, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Basically, yeah, it's, it's, it's pulling like an extra million every couple days, which That's is That's insane nuts. when you think about it. That's fucking, yeah. yeah. For an early access game. And that update was about a week ago, so who knows how high it is now. They stopped counting mm. it. it. It broke the counter. You reckon, and this is like a, this won't happen. I just, I, I, I don't, I know everyone's kind of using this and I, we talked about it when I'm my review and I'm going to talk about it again now about like, oh, I wonder if Game Freak's paying attention. But do you reckon that, um... It's funny like, that you mentioned that. That, that this, so, oh, yeah, I know, that this is, I'm not actually, this, and this is talking to items of sales numbers, like what, Scarlet and Violet sold like, what, 20 million copies in total, I believe? I think that was in like the first week, though. Oh, was it? Okay, never mind. I was going to see, do you, I was going to ask if you reckon it gets like 20 million copies, but Scarlet and Violet's probably at like 30 million or something now. But yeah, I i don't think it will. I think it will like cap out around about 10 or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think the next time we hear a sales update will be when it hits 10 million. Yep, I do as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, you asking about Pokemon, uh, what well, Game Freak keeping an eye on it. Um, Pokemon Company is keeping an eye on it, saying uh, they will investigate and take appropriate measures to address any acts that infringe on intellectual property rights related to the Pokemon. Yeah, so this is probably coming out after there was a mod that added, like, just straight up added Pokemon to Power World. <laughs> And then it's the true. Pokemon company just slams that down immediately. Like, what, what did you think was going to happen, guys? It was, it was a mod that a YouTuber put together, and he was like, I modded Pokemon into the game. And the mod is available, and then right before where he said it was available from, Nintendo, I think, killed his dog in front of him or something to show that they were serious. And then as they were saying that, they said, no, the fuck you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> We, we, we call that the, uh, the, rubber, the rubber hose interrogation, <laughs> where they just beat him with a rubber hose until he, until he um, uh, capitulates. Uh, uh, everyone's been talking about, oh, did Power World steal from Pokemon? What's happening? This, that, the other thing. I think, given, in, like, let, let's be real. No one hates Nintendo fans more than Nintendo. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, given that, Nintendo is very aware of Power World. So... We'll just sort of wait and see what happens, I guess. Yeah, them coming out and saying anything is massive, but from this point, if there's a lawsuit, then I'm pretty sure that the Pokemon company feels like they have a case. If there's no lawsuit, then Power World's just going to continue as it is. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way that... Like, I think they just came out and said it because it was like everyone was just yelling at them to say something, but they're like, yeah, whatever. Um, say something, I'm giving up on Power World. Anyone remember that song? What a good song. Nope. I do not. I feel like no, you just made it. that up. I feel like uh, you're having a psychotic episode, my friend. Probably am. Watch, watch me go by Power World next. Really psychotic. What? what are you <laughs> just to make sure he has like nothing game game added to his 2024 list. <laughs> Hang on, wait a minute. Take off your mask, Pat. <gasps> it's Pikachu all along. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Mr. Game Freak. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pokemon. No, I meant, I meant that it would be psychotic for Steve because I wouldn't be getting it for free on Game Pass. I'd be, I'd be actually oh, buying yeah, it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Anyway, we should... Real we should psychosis yeah. hours. N- N- Nintendo, Nintendo, well aware of Power World. Uh, we'll wait and see. Finally, just to round out, Power World, Poker World. We're we'll doing corners. I guess this is like another corner. Cool corners of the globe, eh? Yeah, there we go. There we go. So ages and ages ago, we talked about the Van Gogh Museum doing a cross collab with Pokemon. And the absolute degenerate behavior of people just going and being like, okay, yeah, cool painter, I guess. Where are the Pokemon cards? Uh, and then fucking scalping them. It just God, made, made me just fucking cringe visibly at the state of humanity that that is a thing. Um, so fun update to that. Uh, some of the staff have been suspended. <laughs> partially for, well, one for allegedly stealing cards and one for feeding information to his friends about like the best time to come and get the cards which uh, Gigi Naka would be proud yeah the second guy is a 25 year tenure worker at the Van Gogh Museum so it's not just like some random intern he's been around the block but I imagine 
that one's probably more of a didn't realize it was against the rules type thing. I'm willing to give the second guy more benefit of the doubt. But yeah, the first guy just straight up stole a box of Pokemon cards. <laughs> That's yeah. like when the um, McDonald's workers steal the Pokemon cards from their Happy Meal stuff. I thought you were going to say steal the Szechuan sauce. Uh, fucking... <laughs> I, I... That's like two things old I... at this point. There, there are two things I hate in this world. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Yeah. So there are three things Boy. I hate in this. Four things, yeah. <laughs> but like the two main things: VTubers and five. Uh, they hate. That's it's anyway. So the two <laughs> two things that annoy me. <laughs> um, uh, scalpers, Getting interrupted. Uh, you get fucked. <laughs> um, uh, scalpers, Patrick, I love this bit. And people that like jump on weird internet hypes for like. No reason. Like that Seshron Source thing is fucking psychotic. <laughs> yeah, no, this is it, this is wild. Remember planking? Holy shit, yes. Yeah, and a couple of people died because they're like planking high up, man. Or planking on train tracks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Re- remember the Tide Pod challenge? Man, humanity like just really likes to go through these uh, weird culling experiments every now and then. Yeah. Uh, anyway, speaking of weird culling experiments. <laughs> Well, hang on. Um, the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is trying to kill their own player base. Oh, I by, thought it was uh, Kill the Justice League. I, Steve, shut up. I thought, I thought that was actually a good segue. Ah, oh, okay. I didn't say it was a bad segue. I just wanted to say something. No, but you, fucking, you fucking interrupt me. You, you interrupt me with flow. What do you... Yeah. No, what, like fine. Your, 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 your favorite singer's in a concert and you're like, hold up, I got something funny to say. Unironically, yes. <laughs> they, <laughs> you they go up and go, wait a second, I know the words to this one. <laughs> <laughs> The Kanye West song. <laughs> yeah, it's just thinking. Who's that. in Paris, Steve? Who is? Uh, Steven, no, get and, off the stage. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's what Kill the Justice League had a bit, bit of a bit of a bit of a bumpy. I realize I'm doing the articles out of order, but it just it made more sense with the segue. A uh, bit of a bumpy launch uh, because as of right now, people could technically be playing it, uh, but no one is because the servers are down for maintenance due to. Uh, a real awkward little bug where people uh, jump, jumped on, uh, again, this is a live service game. I don't have any follow-up to that. Just, it is what it is. Where people were jumping into the game and realizing that they had accidentally completed all of the story. Yep, and there is no mission replay feature, so having a completed save file meant you could not play the game. What a time to be alive. <laughs> I, I believe it's been sorted out now because people have played it and just posted the entire game on YouTube now. And, um, <laughs> hey, all those leaks that people hated, uh, they're real. Or oh, the, the entire bad story of, like, everyone saying, oh, wow, this, this reads really badly. And people were kind of trying to go, like, cope by saying that the voice lines that leaked uh, were AI generated. No, they're from the game. It's all real. Uh. Rough day to be rock steady. I, I I'm not surprised. The, there's there's that whole mess, and people aren't sure whether the people. So um, a reminder to get into the early access thing before the game came out, you had to pay an extra, I think, thirty bucks for the deluxe super. I believe it was um, one hundred US dollars, and yeah, that would have been thirty. I forgot for a moment that it's seventy US dollars now for a video game. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so if if you bought the special come in my pants edition. Um, you got early access and people are trying to figure out, well, most of the reason that you bought that game, uh, other than hating yourself for buying what was probably going to be a suboptimal game anyway, uh, was this early access thing. Um, the early access, I think... The- you lost a day of the early access. Yeah, like a good chunk of the window is just gone. It was three days early access and it took them like a day to fix this, I think. Yeah, and so now so it's like, do two people days. get... Uh, uh, do people get some kind of compensation back for that? Or <laughs> fuck no, you, you <laughs> fuck get no, they you, don't. You get a, you get a, a straight. I, 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 there's three people that I'm fucking like. <laughs> this you're paying Steve's literally list just thirty has dollars name on it. to like oh get like early access to something to a game that's gonna be out in three days. The Warner Brothers Eula also has like, which I don't think is defensible in court, by the way, but. They've got in fine prints that because it's a online service game, they can take down the service at any point, and you're not owed anything. No one's going to be playing this game in six months. I hope they take it. No one's going to be playing this game in a month. Well, no one's going to be playing this game early either, (laughs) even though they paid for it. Yeah, no, it's it's fucking psychotic. Like, uh, so just 
putting my seven IQ hat on for a moment. Um, well, I'm a genius hold on, now. Hold on, he's thinking um, big with this one. Yeah, I knew you fucking play it. <laughs> he's about to eat <laughs> nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. That, oh, close us down. We've done it. The funniest thing I've ever said. No, but no. Like, imagine paying an extra thirty dollars because you're excited for whatever reason to play this game early. Got to consume. You, you take the day off work because whatever, man. You got you're excited for this game. You sit down, you got to play it. Oh, I finished the game. I'm done. Oh, Money stolen, like literally, like, oh. What do you mean? You, you sit down to play it and then you wait and then three days later your friend's like, hey, it's now out of early access, I can play it, do you want to play together? And then you, because you haven't slept in three days, is like, yeah, but I have a level 79,000 character that I'll have to speed run you through all the end game content for. My Harley Quinn has a melee weapon where once you freeze the opponent using it, they are no longer vulnerable to melee damage and you have to shoot them. Wait. I don't know what that means, Seth. What? That just seems. Is that, that that's an where... actual thing where um, she has a weapon where you hit them, it freezes them, and then they become immune to melee damage, so you have to back off and shoot them. Why? Is there some Because sort of... they made this game wrong. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's also funny um, that, like, the no game journalists, us included, were given review codes. <laughs> um, oh, it's yeah, also it screams a... that they're not confident in the game's release. Yeah. Uh, and if uh, and they didn't even give IGN any codes at all, um, so IGN has to buy their own codes, which I think is fucking hysterical to hear. Number one, IGN complaining about that, but number two, that they actually <laughs> did that. Like it's I, everyone's they, everyone's uh, figuring they did that because they talked negatively about the game when they were invited to the press event, which yeah. to me speaks more about Warner Brothers being insecure about yeah. um the getting negative oh, press. Yeah. It's mega petty, and all it's done is IGN can come out and say, oh, hey, they didn't give us a, a review code. Which in turn Wonder has made that is, IGN everyone. really petty going, oh, hey, here's, uh, here's some articles about how to get this game as cheap as possible. It's already 37% <laughs> off in the UK. Okay, that's, that's, that's pretty bad. But yeah, like, IGN's funny. like the, probably the biggest, <laughs> I know, gaming media journalism, and I, yeah, it's just fucking strange. It, this whole, yeah. This has to be like a scam. This has to be like a Ponzi scheme. And look, we're, we're, we're shooting on Suicide Squad, so I'm just going to quickly get put this bullet out there because we've got three articles for it. We need to get through them quickly now. What do you mean? We've already hit two. The third one's that they've also put De Nuvo DRM in and that deserves to get shot, so... Yeah, yeah. No, we've only hit... That, that's the second one. The third one uh, we the, haven't brought up yet is them putting the Joker in as the first Battle Pass character, which... Oh, fuck, I forgot that that was news. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. I thought that was an out-of-season April Fool's joke. Right before the early access of the game became available, they snuck De Nuvo in. It, it wasn't advertised this game was going to have De Nuvo until the last second, and now people are pissed about that, which rightfully so, De Nuvo fucking sucks. I we cracked in for- I, I say De Nuvo doesn't get don't... cracked that well anymore. There's one person, and they're basically crazy. Yeah, I get this shit. <laughs> Every time I read something that they do, I'm like, that's... Good. If, yeah, but yeah, you don't want to play this game anyway. Like, we're cracked or no crack. Don't waste your time playing this game, it seems like. So, so you, you know what's funny is that one person that can crack De Nuvo who is crazy, does it make them on brand or off brand that they choose Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League as the thing that they want to crack because of De Nuvo? Oh, they, they chose to crack Hogwarts Legacy for the most insane reasons. I can't. Uh, yeah, enough. I remember reading, reading something like that. It was just like, a, I want everyone to play this game. So a transphobe doesn't get any money, but like apparently it was like very hard to crack. So they just stayed up for like like a week straight doing it or something like that. <laughs> it's it's just at no, what point but, you... but their their the message about cracking it also went on this massive transphobic rant. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and they're trans themselves, so it doesn't make any sense. Fascinating. But I think yeah, I think you've got to be a special type of crazy to like be able to crack to do that. And then, yeah, the last thing is that this game has no vision. Um, like, the Arkhamverse, <laughs> no. do the Arkhamverse doesn't matter. They're just going to try and do whatever they can. So the first Battle Pass character that they're bringing out, well, not really Battle Pass character, but the first Battle Pass is themed around a Joker, and he'll be, he'll be playable for free when that eventually releases. And, yeah, I think, I think they've said already they've got three seasons already ready to go. So it's going to have more seasons than Babylon's Fall. But will it last longer than those three seasons remains the mystery. I don't think it will. I don't think anybody will care. 
It'll be like that Avengers mm-hmm. game. It'll come out, it'll be dog shit. Nobody will talk about it ever again. Essentially, yeah. Maybe it'll be brought up because uh, the people will make uh, video essays about how it ruined the Arkhamverse. <laughs> Can't wait to w- watch a 12-hour video essay. Yeah, m- yes, but unironically. 12 hours is just the part one of that, though. Um, anyway, that's, that's cool. Um, yeah. So it's so called Killer Justice League. I'm sure we'll have more news on our next episode about, but ain't looking good, fellas. You're, okay, hang on. Let me, let me cook. So it's, Here we go. It's Suicide Squad. Oh, no, Squad. it's burning. Sefi's burning it. It's Tell Suicide them, them Squad, off. but... Those, those seven IQs are just flying now. It's Suicide Squad, but they've ripped off Pokemon asset. <laughs> we can turn them around. <laughs> Imagine if it's not even ripped Pokemon assets. It's literally just the people behind Power World making Suicide Squad, but the ripoff, but it's better than the original. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's not ruining a... What is it now? A uh, 16-year beloved franchise. Uh, anyway, we do need to move on. Speaking of ruining things, uh, Embracer has taken another scalp. It's, it's weird. It's only been, what, like three days since we last heard about uh, Embracer missed, taking a scalp. So. Right, let's get through this one first, and then we'll go back to punch on the other one. How did I get those articles out of order? You know what? We, we, we might as well just hit it, because it's, it's on the back of other games, so... We'll come, we'll come, we'll come back to, to the scalping of Embracer Group. Skull and Bones getting an open beta. Uh, wahoo. Who's excited? Who's going to go, who's going to go sell the open seas? I'm, I'm excited just to see what this fucking game is. It's, it's been edging us for like, what, seven years now? I want this to come what out. What the fuck want... do you mean the promo video is them setting sail in front of the Statue of Liberty? <laughs> yeah. Oh, didn't you watch the video? The video is fucked. The um, video is so stupid. Yeah, it's, I, I... Uh, it's this game's all over the fucking shop. <laughs> so, so it looks like they're just going to do this one for free, the open beta, and it'll be for three yes. days before the game this comes out. Is, yeah, uh, uh, not this weekend. The weekend that comes out. Uh, sorry, the fuck. Not this weekend. The weekend after that, <laughs> and then the next week it's out. I will be participating in this open beta, so I am very excited. Oh, I can't wait to hear you talk about this. I, I'm not going to participate in this. I will be too busy playing good games. <laughs> How do you know if it's good or you haven't played it yet? I, I've, I played Tekken. I know it's good. I'll just play that instead. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, no, that's the, the, the Skull and Bones news. Can't, can't, can't I'm, wait. I'm just curious as to how many people are expected to buy this because Ubisoft doesn't want anyone buying games anymore. Yeah, no, you, you, don't, you don't own games, you stream them instead. Yeah, you, they don't want us owning games. You can buy them, they don't give a shit about that, as long as you don't own them. You do Smart not own video games, CEO. you own a license to play video games. Yeah, well, I own a license to that guy's house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm anyway. glad you went that direction, because you could have taken that much darker. Anyway, so back, back to Embracer scalping videos. Idos Montreal taking out 97 staff and axing a Deus Ex game uh, in the process. Uh, can I get a wahoo? Yeehaw. Bum bum. Fuck. I just, I, I, I love that. I, I love that every time I see Embracer Group in the headline, I already know what the article's about. I hate that this keeps hitting game devs. Yeah, it's That's, um. I, the silence is just gonna hang there. It's just fucking. It's just sad, honestly. Yeah, it's the Embracer Group, baby. Another week goes by. Another hundred people lose their jobs. I don't know that there's a huge amount that we can add to this one. Not really. It's it's more layoffs, and we're going to roll into more layoffs happening. Oh yeah, no. If you thought ninety seven was bad, I see that ninety seven raised you uh, one thousand nine hundred. Uh, thanks, Microsoft. Turns out the seventy billion dollars that they dropped on Activision Blizzard. Uh, they kind of needed to pay people. Oops. Oh, well, that's not actually the case. It's just... You want to know a really fucked thing about this situation? Oh, is this the Bobby Kotick stat? No, no, no. Uh, no, no. This isn't Bobby Kotick <laughs> stat, uh, stat. This is the, um, the reset error doing math stat and, like, looking at previous acquisitions. Um, someone on reset error, ba- like, accurately called, hey, when a merger like this happens... Usually 20% of the workforce is fired after the acquisition goes through. About 20% of ABK is 1,900 people. And that was, that, that was posted like six months before the acquisition closed. 
and then they got banned by someone uh, on reset, er like one of the mods on reset error. And then people recently found out that that mod that banned them, uh, they wanted the acquisition to go through because they had a financial stake in it. <laughs> a tale is wow. all this time. Insider trading happens to us all. But yeah, like, yeah, the, the job loss is always going to come. They're merging together. Uh, redundant positions. People These are not redundant positions, by the way. I want to get that out oh, there. Like, peop no, everyone was saying, oh, no, it's just redundant positions. These are not redundant positions. This isn't like QA, uh, QA and uh, marketing and stuff. <laughs> this is like across the board, like uh, artists, directors, uh, writers, shit tons of different people all over the place getting fired. I, I, I know this wasn't the point of what you just said, but... Got, got a little bit bristly when you said these are not redundant positions, this is not QA and marketing. First of all, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> no, because people look at those and go, oh no, those are all redundant, it doesn't matter. I'm saying it's not just no. those that people call redundant. I, I know what you're saying, it was just really, it was just a really interesting way of saying that. I know. <laughs> I, it, no, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rough way to try and walk around that, but yeah, people call those redundant because Oh yeah, Microsoft has their own QA departments and marketing departments. They don't need the ones from ABK. First off, fuck you. They, though those people are more in tune with like their things than uh, the Microsoft ones are. You don't need to like bring them up. To, you don't need to train people up to speed on how to do the Activision and Blizzard marketing stuff. Um, and QA and in general, QA needs to be done. Like, look at how Redfall was uh, QA'd and then go. Oh yeah, no, we can we can fire the ABK ones because. We got the Microsoft ones in store. They probably let the Microsoft ones go and kept the ABK ones. Potentially, but I think it was uh, from across all of these because it's not just people from ABK that got fired. There's also people from the Microsoft gaming division got fired as well. So, yeah, it's it's far spread across the entire like Microsoft gaming division. So, the, do, you, do, you wanna, do you want to know the, uh, the, the fucked Bobby Kotick stat? Yeah, give me the fucks Bobby Kotick stat. Is it that his? Oh, oh hold on, let me guess. Let me guess. Is yeah. it that his um bonus uh was more than all of these uh, employees' pay combined? Pretty much. That that Ugh. I don't know if we officially know how much he got paid out as a result of the acquisition, but rough ballparks put it at like three. Let's say conservatively, because that that's what Forbes reports. They they say more than three hundred and seventy five million. So. Bobby Kotick in one year got paid two hundred thousand dollars per employee that just got terminated. Yeah, and like the average salary for these uh, industry is not positions, two hundred thousand like, dollars. Yeah, it's it's like half of that at best, unless it's a senior position and it's inching like one hundred fifteen to one hundred fifty. Shit's fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it, that's, it uh, do that's be another, like that. It's another W for the perfect zero on the diversity scale. <laughs> I forgot we call him that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's sad. There's like a second part of this, which is um, two of the original, well, like, Star Wars of Blizzard are, are also leaving. But to be honest, I don't think it's as important as the fact that 1900 people just had their souls crushed more so than already by working at ABK or I guess MSABK. They immediately lost access to all of their, like, uh, Microsoft Teams and Slack logins and everything so they couldn't even like gather Say information each with other. each other to like try and stay in contact or help each other get into new positions or anything like that they were all just cut off yep we also should quickly throw in here because we didn't hit it last week I know yeah the riot one another... i was about to mention yeah. that yeah cool uh riots laid off about 500 employees i think yeah something like that so there's a thing I want to mention with the Riot stuff as well. Yeah, 530 roles got cut. They posted their email to the employees to, like, go, oh, hey, here's, like, just so we're transparent with everyone, like, like the audience and everyone, here's what we're doing. And I, at first I was like, oh, yeah, this seems pretty good because they're getting, like, six months severance pay. They're getting their 100% of their 2023 annual bonus, uh, annual performance bonus paid out. They're getting all these health Seth, benefits and stuff. Seth, where's the butt? Where's the butt? Turns out all of these are legally required because they're from California <laughs> and uh, <laughs> a bunch of, like, all their, like, overseas uh, workers are also, like, all the, reaching all their minimum requirements. This isn't because they're kind. It's because they legally have to offer all of this. Wow. Really makes you think, don't it? Yeah. We should make our own, um, 
gaming company and employ all these people. They'll do it for cheap as well. <laughs> well, I mean... Steven, I can't afford to pay myself $100,000 <laughs> as a game developer. How am I going to pay someone else $100,000? I was going to say, the real cynical take is that there are so many people that have been fired, I imagine that it, if you ever wanted to hire game devs, now's a pretty good time. Look, you took the words out of my mouth, Pat, so I'm not the bad guy that said it. Listen, as the CEO of FTL, sometimes you got to make the tough call. Are you? Steve, you're fired. <laughs> you know what? Well, I'm the CFO, the chief fun officer, so that's not very fun for me. Oh, uh, one more thing I want to hit on the Riot one as well is that reading this email... The thing that was like the most soul crushing from an outsider going, oh, it must suck reading this as a person that just got laid off, is that Riot said, we had to make these because we made some bad bets. Oh, yeah, that's right. They said that. That's fuck. Whatever. Yeah. And those bad bets are things like trying to fund a lot of single player League of Legends lore games that no one played. Did you know that there's six of those games out? I only knew of one of them and I didn't know it was out. I can't name them, but I do know of, of, like, multiple. So maybe not six, but I know several. Yeah, the sixth one is going to be their final release. I don't know if that's out now or coming soon, but they're cancelling all the rest that are in the pipeline for those single-player lore games. Mm. And yeah, there there's, there's a lot of cuts. There was that fighting game that they were doing as well, right? Oh, yeah, the fighting game is still going. Um, I, I feel really scummy as a fighting game enjoyer because a lot of people that are into fighting games are like, Oh yeah, so 530 people got laid off, but they also wrote in this uh, update that they're going to tell us more about the fighting game down the line. I'm like, guys, that's that's not the important thing right now. Oh well, fighters gotta fight. Next up, looking back to Blizzard news, uh, we have um, Johanna F- F- Far- Faris, F- Faris? I, I don't know how to say their name, uh, as the new president. I, I basically got this in here because something I think is interesting to note about it is that from our good friend and uh, uh, like big fan of the podcast, Jason Trier has mentioned... <laughs> don't, well, don't you fucking mention him as a fucking fan of the podcast. He, Actually, uh, guys, I, I think I just had a stroke. Did I say Johanna or Joanna? Uh, uh, I think you I said Johanna. It, I would have pronounced it Johanna, but whatever. But yeah. Um, Maybe it is Johanna, but anyway. Jason uh, Trier Joe said Mama. that like, when, when he... um. When he broke this news, he said that uh, um, Blizzard has been trying to fight off having someone from Activision overseeing their activities basically the entire time they've been with Activision. So now that this, this is like just them losing the battle. So someone from the Activision side of the company is finally overseeing Blizzard stuff. Oh, it's like the, the Bungie situation with Sony. Yeah, <laughs> except this time Microsoft made the call. <laughs> it, it happened after Microsoft bought them out. I could imagine the conversation was just uh, Microsoft going, yeah, fuck it. Just put this person in charge. And it's eeny, meeny, money, mo. Yeah, essentially. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'd love to see it. It's like Matt Booty <laughs> being put in charge of the entirety of uh, Xbox gaming services. Yeah, and how good's that going at the moment? They've got Power World. You're welcome, by the way. I think that's been <laughs> in the works for a long time, but he, he also gave us Redfall. You can't, you can't win everything. <laughs> You're welcome, by the way. <laughs> What, how did Starfield go? You're welcome, by Oversaw the way. I that one. It, um, it sold some copies. Did it? They're pulling physical <laughs> versions of that game off shelves. Uh, physical media is dead anyway. It actually isn't. So Sony leaks <laughs> it showed that it's like a 70-30 split at, at best for digital, and digital being the 30%. Really? Oh, I didn't see that one. Uh, interesting. Um, rats. Oh, okay. don't worry. People on Game Pass need the subscription for their eyes to work, so, yeah. You win some, you lose some. What a weird uh, thing to say. Anyway. <laughs> uh, speaking of weird things to say, actually, no, fuck, no, no, damn it. <laughs> Segway was teed up, but no, it doesn't, it doesn't fit. Uh, anyway, that, that's, that, that's all of the, um, all the ABK news. Wahoo, as I say. Uh, what a, what a great time for gamers, what a shit time for game devs. Uh, finally, uh, on on the agenda for this week, the absolute state of play is is Yay, returning. I love these in oh, twenty four hours, basically, right? Twenty, maybe maybe within the next two days at least. So by the time this goes up, the state of play would have happened. So our thoughts on it will probably be given next episode. Yeah, it, uh, they're saying Hopefully it's going to be forty minutes long, 
and they're going to show 15 games. And we, we have at least one good game confirmed. We're going to see, we're going to see Rise of the Ronin. Two good games. <laughs> Remember, Patrick, a game's not good until it comes out. Patrick, I don't know how to tell you this, but Silk Song isn't real. You have to let go. The accident was five years ago. <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's Hollow Knight? <laughs> Hollow Knight is real. I can play that one. Okay, you're right, fair call. Oh, man. Microsoft made promises about Silk Song they'll never deliver on. Maybe they're just trying to make sure it doesn't turn out like Redfall. Yeah, and you know the best way to do that is to fire 1,900 people. You win some, you lose some. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> Fuck, you know, we're, we're going to round the news out uh, this week. What, what was that comment that the dude made in Slack? I think it was one of the, the writers that got let go. At least I brought value to shareholders. Yeah, oh, something like yeah, that. It was so dire. Banger. But those are the real people that matter. No one cares about anybody else. I want right, I'm going to put a pin on Stephen being a CEO apologist. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in good fun. I hate CEOs. I'm, I'd be the first. Yeah, actually, I don't, I, don't, I don't care. It's like when we were on break and he defended my landlord until I said something. And he's like, oh, fuck that guy. <laughs> oh, where? I'm raising your rent because uh, I can't afford uh, my cost of living. Get fucked. Sell your property, then you bastard. God, I hate landlords so much. <laughs> Guillotine. <laughs> Shitty investment. He's probably got 20 properties anyway. You know what? And burn down your house there. Um, to get down to the landlord. <laughs> You're the second person to tell me that. <laughs> Good. Just get insurance. Uh, the thing is, this is a townhouse. I'd be burning down my neighbours as well. Good. It's well, probably both owned by the same person. Well, no, they're not. The, my neighbours are pretty kind. Well. If I don't want to see like, them perish in a fire. Holy fuck sake. <laughs> We don't have an audience question this week, but if you would also like to tell Seth to burn his house down, <laughs> then get in touch. <laughs> I actually quite like that segue. We're on uh, Facebook at Fast Travel Lounge, uh, X formerly Twitter. I <laughs> so fucked I have to keep saying that. I love saying it like that. <laughs> at Fast Travel Lounge, minus one of the L's, the L that Elon keeps taking, no matter how hard he tries not to. We're also fosterlounge.bluesky.social, I think, or something similar. You can find us on there. It's a tiny social network. Um, and good old, good old mailbag, fosterlounge at gmail.com. The thing that you've been listening to for the past, geez, two and a half hours, rough. Um, if you've enjoyed that, uh, or at least part of it, feel free to uh, give us a, a rating, a review, a comment, a subscription, perhaps, if you would be so kind. Um, on the on the platform that you're listening to this on really helps us out. Really, um, uh, number go up makes uh, Stephen a happy boy, and cranky Stephen is a nightmare for everyone. So do us a solid and and help keep those endorphins going for Stephen. Patrick, stop dawdling. You got three minutes before it's midnight. You can wrap it up before then. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if there'll be one next week. Definitely one in the next two weeks sometime. Uh, but until then, uh, I've been Patrick. We're at the end of episode 105. I've been joined by Seth and Steve. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll catch you next time. Goodbye. Happy birthday, Pokemon ripoffs. <laughs> <laughs>